All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We got ourselves a big match. It is the World Team League Grand Finals. We've got Basilisk's Trigger starting off, leading out the charge for Basilisk. His teammates, Se teammates Serral and Rainer waiting in the wings right now. He's up against Ryung, representing onside. His teammates, Maru and Sola, also waiting in the wings. Now, this is a familiar format, guys. It is, of course, a best of two between the players and essentially if you lose a map you lose your life but you get to play the two games so if it's tied up one one then you both are eliminated and the next two players come out however if say trigger two zeros Ryung uh then he will stay in Ryung will have lost his life and uh, trigger will also by winning the second map have saved his own life and therefore be going through to uh try and work his way forwards now obviously because it is all about eliminating the other team uh, there's three players and they can revive one as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's actually really kind of an interesting format where we could see Maru versus Solar twice, for instance, right? We could, we could potentially see Maru Solar. They both get revived <laughs> and then play each other again. Oh my God. We could dream, right? But let's be real. Maru and Sola never end up actually playing. So, uh, pretty damn unlikely. Uh, my whole Twitch chat saying, oh, thanks so much, Pig. I mean, I was super confused, and now you've definitely cleaned that up. You definitely didn't make it more confusing. Point is, players need to kill each other. Let's let's keep it that way. If what I said was too complicated, because I know it hurts a little bit. So this best of seven down here is going to be the overall, over, overall score between the players, right? So if they go 1-1, one, one, then we're going to put one point here. And we're going to think of it as first to four on that best of seven scoreboard is what actually ends up. Uh, being the the victory for a team so we'll see what happens guys um chat saying oh we weren't actually joking we actually it actually made sense okay i actually apparently explained the format for wtl for the first time ever without overcomplicating things as much as i could have i'm sure there's still plenty of confused people because it is a very different format but at the end of the day it's just good starcraft when you see the player for the team you like winning that's good for them and it's bad for the other guy doesn't get simpler than that Ryung going for a two Reaper Hellion opening. Adept does come across the map here for Trigger. Trigger has been on a tear lately. He's been absolutely smashing. Um, wasn't it him who 2 0 would be on? So that's kind of cool. Also, um, in the lead up to this match, the previous match, Abydos had a, a few really good matches. Got to the third place, second place uh, match against Basilisk. And uh, they actually ended up uh facing Serral. Serral went out first and Serral killed the entire Abydos roster right before this series. So maybe Serral's a bit tired. Maybe that works in Onside's favor as Onside came in top of the table from the regular season and didn't have to play any matches in the playoffs. They literally just get to wait in the grand finals because their during the season performance was so good. What's so funny about that is that Basilisk actually beat Onside when they played in the regular season and was undefeated. Whereas obviously Onside wasn't, but the thing is Onside had more dominant performances and because it's a points-based table, it's not about did you win or did you lose overall as a team, it's about how much did you win or lose by. So Onside actually had way more points from the regular season and even though they lost their head-to-head -head in a close ace match with, uh, with Basilisk, um, it, it actually was uh, still something where, where they were on top and that's kind of cool to, to realize that Serral was such a linchpin, I think, for Basilisk, where he often had to get kind of revived and then finish the team off or, or do a, a lot of heavy lifting on his own. And then it was on Trigger and Rainer just to win one kind of series between the two of them. Um, obviously, Rainer had a little bit of a low point during a lot of the season, for Rainer at least, where he was losing to a lot of the top dogs. However, Rainer is now back in fine form and looking unstoppable lately. So this is actually very scary for Onside. I think they come in here as the underdogs. Stork is well positioned for Trigger. Triple Widow Mine drop coming in. The Hellion Reaper's diving the natural at the same time. We'll watch the Widow Mines. We'll go check those Hellions in a moment. Oh, watch out, the Widow Mine! Oh, big boomies! Big boom, boom, booms! Oh man, nine probes go down. Also, lots of lost mining time on the natural as well. And two of the Widow Mines escape. Very nicely timed out there by uh, by Ryung. That was really well done. I feel like Ryung is not that good if you put him under pressure in terms of a very messy, scrappy game where you really stress his mechanics, his speed, his multitasking, his ability to adjust under pressure. But you give him nine probe kills early like that, two Widowmines still in the back keeping the Stalkers pinned at home, he becomes an incredibly scary opponent to be facing. So definitely going to be feeling a bit of stress now is Trigger trying to kind of figure out what the heck do I do from here? How do I make sure I'm safe? And he's deciding to go charge and Colossus very early off just a handful of stalkers. 
Raven has been spotted by the Observer. Stalkers try to blink in and one of them, oh, kind of messes up. But you know what? You get an SCV, you cancel a depot. Tank's well positioned enough. You're not really looking to do any big pressure and triggers back to probing, trying to chrono those as much as he can. I think it's a pretty good setup so far from Trigger, and he is doing a good job of chronoing probes to recover, but the question is, as always, is when that Raven tank push comes, how do you stop it? Observer a bit too far forward. If he had it just a little bit up to the left, Marines would not be able to reach it, and it would have forced an auto turret out if Ryung wanted to take it down. Stim's on the way. Expect combat shields and plus one weapons in the near future. Plus one weapon, sorry, is already actually upgrading down here on the natural. Four gases already. And you're going to see cutting workers for the moment is Ryung. He wants to be building just lots of bio. He's going to be pumping Widow Mines, Medivax, all that stuff. Marine does take a few hits. Oh, Widow Mine drop comes back in round two. Oh no, trigger! Trigger! Oh, damn. As five probes go down. He does dodge the Widow Mine with a Stalker Blink, but that's damage that you cannot afford. If that Medivac gets home as well, that'll add insult to injury. Ryung's stacking up the juice on that Raven. It's going to go across the map for some auto turret harass. And he's got a double drop that's going to go around the bottom as well. Oh, this is so hard to deal with. It's going to be auto turrets in the main, double drop in the back of the natural, and then a big push shoving through the middle of the map. And who needs a third command center? He's cut workers. He's just pumping out bio mine now is Ryung. He'll no doubt build one on location uh, or on the high ground as he moves out. But for now, he feels like, hey, as long as I keep building my army strength, that's where the advantage lies. Now the Colossus are, uh, I don't know if they're going to get plus two or plus three range, guys. Looks like plus two. So it looks like they are playing on a mod to make sure that Colossus range is not in the game. Uh oh, oh, he did not go across with the drop. He used it to flank the Stalkers. Trigger's going to lose all but one Stalker, and that is uh, unfortunate. Three Stalkers going down there. Two tanks, bio mine parading through the middle of the map. Trigger's shield battery is quite far back here. I wouldn't mind him building another one up front, but of course he's low on unit count. He's got seven gate charge. Extended thermal ants is almost here, but the double matrix is ready on that Raven. You really want to engage before the tanks get sieged, but he's a bit slow. He's a bit slow. He's out of position right now. Uh-oh. Oh, he's going to let the tanks get in a good position. That robo is looking extremely exposed. He's trying to chrono a warp prism. He wants to dodge the interference matrix with pickup on the prism, but it's not going to be out in time. He does spread the zealots to set off a few of those widow mines on the marines. Nice micro by trigger here. He needs that prism out. If he can dodge at least one of the matrixes, that's going to be big. Prism's going to pop here. Notice he immediately has that prism on a control group and he's getting it over near the Colossus. One more warp in his zealots and go, I think is going to be the play here. Trigger wants to jump on top. He'd like Ryung to expose himself right now. He wants Ryung to be in the open. Those Widow Mines going to get ready to fire again. A few zealots going around the right side. Colossus marching forward. Prism dancing in and out. Oh, oh, here we go. Big stim. The interference matrix is the prism. So he picks up a Colossus, but it's effectively shut down. It, he thought he was dodging interference matrix, but he actually picked a Colossus into a cage. Ryung with the 300 IQ anticipated the dodge and he actually aimed for the transport rather than the Colossus. Ryung, you are such a genius. But despite that, that's a pretty good hold for Trigger. He keeps his Colossus alive. He loses mostly Zealots. I mean, the unit's lost that doesn't look great, but there's no third base for Ryung. Unfortunately, the probe count does kind of suck for Trigger, only 53. But he's probing, he's going double forge. And I gotta say, that was about as impressive a hold as they uh, as they possibly could have had. Very well played there by Trigger. After the start he's had to take a fight like that, it actually makes me think he is... You know, if he had a clean opening, he would have wiped the floor with this push. But he's lost bloody 15 probes this game. Here we go, Zealot Drop coming in. There's two Vikings, though. I like that Ryung's ready for that. This is a, not going to go well for Trigger at all. You, you're not expecting him to have Vikings yet. You're like, what? But you got to realize, dude, he had Medivacs building for a while. He's got all those he needs. The Zealots will at least take out a couple of SCVs. Three SCVs do go down, but the Prism does fall. That is quite an expensive thing to lose. The Raven also survived, which makes it very hard to track this army when its next move out comes. Up on four gases, trying to build some uh, batteries up on the fourth base also. Third Colossus is on the way. 1-1 one, one upgrades should be starting momentarily for trigger. There we go. Plus one armor and plus one attack will no doubt start soon after. There we go. Immortals coming in. So three Colossi into Immortals. Seven Zealots, seven Stalkers, three Sentries. Three Sentries. Interesting that he rebuilt the Sentries. Going to be relying on Guardian Shield. Maybe try to use a few Force Fields. Look at this little attack up the top. Is he nearby? I think his army's a little too far out of position. That could get sniped. Simbio, very mobile, very hard hitting as well. I think part of that move around the top is trying to clean up observers while he's there. 
He's going to find a few zealots. Just try to pick those off and back away. Single zealot kill. Costs nothing but medevac energy. Not too bad. Trigger's got 1-1 one, one on the way. He's building an 8th gateway. He's making zealots, stalkers, colossus, and immortals. The viking count, though, is at 6. You've got another interference matrix ready. Second one available in about a minute. And you're going to have 6 vikings. He has paused viking production, which is a little unusual. 4th commands and a 2nd upgrades coming in. 2-2. Two, two. So Ryung is not committing that hard to this push. It looks like he's planning to go to the next stage. The Raven goes down. Anti-armor missile does land on a lot of those units. Ghost lands a pretty slick AMP though before that happens. Oh man, the battery overcharge does not go down. I think he was so good on his chrono boost that he didn't have it available. I don't know if it would have actually mattered. Zealot's coming in from behind as well, but man, not using battery overcharge really hurts there. I don't know if it would have really mattered without anti-armor missile. Let's just double check that replay really quickly. Yeah. This is that pain you have when you're so good at macro that you're unable to use your abilities. This is such a rare thing to happen on 4 base. Trigger gets punished for good macro, man. <laughs> oh no! He's only got 35 energy. He's like, can you just give me 20 seconds, please? And the EMP was really nice as well. I think a few force fields could have been good here. But another EMP hits that sentry before it can land any spells. Oh, Really well played here by Ryung. Takes game one. Right, guys, going into game two. Now, Ryung's team have killed Trigger. They've got the, the kill on him. He's dead no matter what. He's eliminated after this second match in these two players' best of two. However, if Trigger can win this match, then guess what? That's going to happen. You're going to see down there in the scoreboard, he's going to get a point and then eliminate Ryung. So all Ryung's fighting for right now is to preserve his life. If he wins this game, he stays in and he gets to play Basilisk's next player, whether that be, of course, uh, Serul or Reyna. So that's kind of the format. Hopefully that continues to explain it a little bit as we get through these games. And uh, let's keep on going. Um, I hope you're enjoying the nice crisp quality here in game, the first series, by the way. Unfortunately, the series uh, quality is going to drop after this as I couldn't get replays. A lot of people said, sure, I'll get you those replays. And unfortunately, uh, didn't ask with enough lead time because Trigger's the only one who's actually sent them to me so far, including the admins. <laughs> so we're going to be having to cast off the clean feed after this game, which will, of course, not look as good as being in-game. And I won't be able to control the camera. But on the other hand, I get to pretend I'm casting a live event. I'll be like, ooh, I just sit back. Don't control the camera. You also don't have to deal with me suddenly doing accidental, like, kind of jagged camera movements like that. I know. I know sometimes I get a bit excited. The adrenaline starts pumping, casting good StarCraft games, and I do move around a fair bit. Now, Trigger's seen it's a one base opening again for Ryung, but he has pulled off gas and will be taking the expansion at about 2 minutes 20. Fascinating. I never thought, if, if you asked me three, four years ago, would, you know, a double gas opening, a TVT opening is what we used to call this, would this become standard in any other matchup? And I would say, heck no, it's way too bad versus Protoss and Zerg. And yet it's become a mainstay of the TVP matchup. Turns out putting on that bit of pressure and also having so many different options off the double gas, it really makes it hard for the Protoss to guess exactly what's happening. And that makes it quite worth it. Here we go. Reaper coming on in, going after the probes. That Adept shading out was a bit risky. Oh, Trigger actually gets it back to the Stalker. Ryung maybe could have micro that Reaper slightly better. Adept's coming in. One Reaper and a Hellion can beat the Adept. The problem is you don't want to lose any of these units. Good micro by Ryong. Very good micro, though. So now, you'd, normally you'd try to hunt that Reaper down, that uh, Adept down before it can get home. But he lets it slip by and should probably go back and repair that Hellion, surely. Yeah, Ryong isn't. Ryong is going to go for a very dangerous backstab. If he drives by, that's a crazy move. I really feel like with a red point Hellion, probably just heal lets up the better move. Ooh, bit of a supply block here. What's going on? That's a big supply block. Bit of a mistake there for Ryung. Bit nervous here. It's like, come on, man. I got to get rid of Trigger. Maybe stay in. Maybe eliminate Serral or Rainer. Show that I am I'm one of the big daddies too. It's kind of... And I feel like it's a really hard spot to be on one of these teams as like Ryung or Trigger. I mean, Ryung obviously is more storied, more experienced than Trigger over the years. But in general, just to... To be in the company of a Solar, a Maru, a Rainer, a Serral does feel like uh, it's kind of a relief because those guys are expected to win and you aren't always expected to win. But then you find yourself here against, you know, their weakest player, you're the weakest player. You're both fantastic StarCraft players, but when you're up against top five players in the world, not too hard to be the weakest player on the team. 
It's going to be a very important match. Trigger, of course. If he can get a point back. I mean, he took out Beyond. If he took out Beyond earlier in the regular season, I know that he can do it. The fact that he held in that first fight was amazing. By the way, that 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 that, that prism, the choice to difference matrix, the prism. I'm not going to stop raving about that, by the way. I hope we get to see some more interactions like that. That was very clever. Okay, split the probes a bit better this time. It is two Widow Mines. Stalkers are on the high ground trying to stop the medevac rotating up. But because they don't want to risk going to the low ground, they do struggle a little. Luckily, the Widow Mines get cleaned up, though. It's a lot of mining time. There's a good, like, 25 seconds of mining time, I feel. And you still keep the medevac if you Reapers and Alien alive. I think that's a pretty successful drop. It's not like it did nearly as much as the last game, but it's definitely something you're okay with. What I don't like for Trigger is he's leaving his main undefended right now. What? Does he think the drop's there? Uh-oh, Trigger's lost track of the drop, guys. He doesn't realize it's up to the right. He should have his stalkers waiting in his main. That's just going to give the opportunity for them to drop, kill a few probes, pick up, get away, and distract him. Also, Raven's going through at the same time as well. So definitely a bit unfortunate that Trigger seems to be unaware of the positioning. Because if he knows it's a Raven, he'd move down here and try to intercept it somewhere on that area. Stalkers come forward. They pick off an SCV. Very nicely done. Stork, as you can see, can take a siege tank shot without getting through their shields. So as long as it's only one tank in range, it's not a big deal. Raven's going to move down that side. These Stalkers are not in the greatest position, guys. They're just kind of chilling at the front. Raven's going to come in. Stalkers run forward, get another SCV, which is nice. But look at that. Auto turret revenge. Ryung coming in, putting the pressure back on trigger. But he doesn't target fire. Bit of a mistake for him. Only gets a single probe. Could have got two or three there. But he lets it just automatically target the uh, fighting unit. Drop in the main. Drop in the main. Uh-oh. Hellion does... Oh, that first Hellion splash hit like four probes. Oh, and the Reaper's finishing them all off. Very nicely done here. Wow, five probes. And like I said, it's because he just lost track of where that medevac was. Unfortunate there for Trigger. He's still got a much better economy because he held so well early on. But you got to realize every time you replace these probes, that costs you. He's up to how many gateways now? He's going for Colossus range, six gates, all that sort of stuff. Interestingly, it's a much quicker third command center for Ryong. So Ryong is not committing as hard to the two base play this time around. And he's also continuing tank production. Normally just two tanks is standard. He's building a third and that plus the early third command center makes me think Ryong may be planning to just nonstop build tanks, go for like a six or seven siege tank push around the 10 minute mark. That's something which is very unusual these days. But uh, Ryung's the sort of guy who does love his well, his, his kind of pre-planned giant siege pushes. Ooh, the Observer's going to see this. Trigger sees the drop on the left. There's still, though, this little mini drop on the right. That could come in and cause damage. He's pulled everything out of the main again. Oh, he's getting played like a fiddle right now. And the moment these Stalkers get F2'd, guess what? That Raven's coming in. Forta turrets in the back. Ryung's setting up a three-prong diddle-diddle right now. He's going to he's gonna diddle-diddle him while playing like a fiddle-fiddle. The Raven does join up with the army. One of the medevacs gets shot down. Nice catch here for Trigger. This is a second Raven, and it gets sniped down. That army gets cleansed. Okay, here I am expecting Trigger to fall apart. He's up 20 supply now. The Reaper Hellion's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. The Colossus and the Stalker are right there, though. Trigger just shut this down very well. His handling is great. Trigger's ability to dance with the best has really been improving. The Raven goes right, gets a volley on it, and it goes back to the left. Oh, Trigger's friggin' all over this. He's on six gas. He's on 62 probes. I really feel this season, playing with Basilisk, he's just developed so much. I mean, he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with such great players on a daily basis. I love that he stopped at just two Colossus this game. I think too many people go four Colossus and then lose them all to Vikings. Whereas in this game, he stopped at two. He's going Immortals. Now, funnily enough, I mean, Ryung's not actually building uh, Vikings, just Medivacs. So we'll see what happens. Nice feedback. Cleans up the second Raven. Units lost tab. Look at that, guys. Yeah, there's been some mining time, so it's obviously there is still more damage than is represented in the units lost. That's still beautiful play there. The thing is, I still worry that these two Reapers and Hellions are going to kill like another 10 probes this game. Because I, I fear the fact that he's not got a cannon, no battery, no units. They drop in. Guess what? You've just warped in somewhere else. You can't warp in. You don't have recall available. What are you going to do? And that's that's worrying. He's handled it very well every time in the past. But, you know, you got to be careful. Zealot charges in. Tanks friendly fire. Ryung is up on four siege tanks, still has the factory on the tech lab. He's starting Viking production now as well. Hallucinated Phoenix comes in, sees the tank is just sitting there. What observers do we have on this map? There's two observers out, guys, but they're both in very defensive positions. This one's just been left above the robo. It's actually easy to not notice that with where it's positioned. There we go. He does bring it to the front. This observer is actually really poorly placed. Um, you got to realize that observer is just chilling 
in a useless position. And with the Ravens being gone, he could have an Observer here, an Observer here, and see everything that happens on this map. So definitely a bit of missing map information right now for Trigger. Drop comes back in the main. As I said, Warpin's not available. Only a single Zealot available. No recall. He's going to lose like five more probes, and that's just unnecessary for Trigger. Uh, th there's something to be said for not over-defending things and really, you know, just getting the minimal number of units to deal with the pressure as required. But uh, this is definitely way more frustrating than it needs to be. And that veteran medevac pilot, she gets out of there. She's going to rejoin the army at home. So great preservation by Ryung. He's adding ghosts. Fourth command center armory. Still building siege tanks. He's playing a I hope to just never die style. Not very good versus Zealot Archons in the front. But with the ghost count growing, that'll help him out. Fifth base going up for Trigger. I think Trigger's very used to playing against Terrans who will come and fight you. So the, the problem he may run into here is that he might not know how to deal with this style of Terran. I don't know the last time I saw a European mass siege tanks and turtle up. Ryung, TY, very occasionally Maru. These guys do this once in a blue moon. So the Korean Protoss players are used to it. At least to, like they don't play against it very often, but one in one in 10 games or something. So they kind of have experience there. I don't know if Trigger's played against it before. We'll see how he approaches this problem. Immortals are out. Five Immortals now adding Disruptors. I would like to see these rocks get broken, broken by Trigger. I feel like opening the map up is going to favor him as a player against this slow Siege Tank style. Five Zealots for a Siege Tank. Questionable trade there. But you got minerals to burn, so why not? Trigger's going to start his 2-2 a little behind, but that's okay. He's going up to 11 gateways. Now, what I'd really love to see from him is you're maxed. You've got a crazy income. Take two more gases and go to five Robos. He's sitting on two Robos, and we saw from Classic just how good mass Robo play is. Got an upcoming video. I'm going to be talking about why I think Classic is potentially the best Protoss in the world right now. And uh, Some funny testimonials. I asked all the other players what they thought, and most of them said we don't think he's that good. <laughs> so, anyways, we'll talk about that later. Zealots coming in on the Siege Tanks. Oh, Siege Tank goes down. Zealots try to run away. Army on the right. You've got to be careful, though. Those Vikings, very scary. Great disruptor shot lands. Stalkers try to target the Vikings, but the tank, tanks are very good versus uh, Stalkers. How many tanks are left, guys? Only three? Dude, I actually think he could push there. He could win the game there. But if these guys come in on, on the flank, that's where he's scared. But if he breaks through this army and cleanses these units, that could be so, so good right now for Trigger. 2-2 two, two fam on the way. Disruptors, Warp Prism's Dark Shrine. He's building a sixth Nexus on the gold in the bottom right. I definitely think he's got an advantage, but they're both maxed out. Zealots running on the left. The bio is there and ready for it. Army does clean the tank on the front. Good pullback micro. One of the Colossi is very weak. Those are mortals taking a fair bit of damage. The Disruptors are going to try and uh, stop him from getting chased down. I, I really think Trigger just needs to run and throw balls. But his balls are empty. Oh, his balls are actually empty right now. Where's the Zealot warp in? A Zealot warp in front of this army could have been game changing. But he doesn't have a warp in available. Oh, no. Trigger. And look at that. Ryung spreadies are on point And there's only two Robos. So he can't rebuild any good units. He was warping all of his Zealots in for run buys. Not reinforcing the main army. The classic mistake of thinking the opponent has to deal with your backstabs. But he threw the first backstab in a bit messily. And with only two Robos, you can't recover from these positions. It's so hard. Maybe he can hang on. But this is where two Robos really bites you in the butt. Having four or five Robos when you're ahead like this gives you so much insurance as a Protoss. I guarantee you, if you ask Terran players, should you do that as a Protoss? They'd say no. And you'd say, why? Why should you not build more Robos? And they'd say, because I don't think it's fair if Protoss can make that many balls. Seriously, two balls is all you're allowed at a time. If you're allowed to make two balls at a time, that's illegal. They would not be happy playing against Protoss that build five Disruptors at a time and instantly remax their balls, their Immortals, their Colossi. Trigger does lose his gold. He's got a new base going up at the top left. He's not dead by any means because he's got, of course, so much money. He does start 3-3, but Ryung is ahead on 3-3. He's got plus two ship weapons and the Fusion Core, which tells us he's going to go for that deadly Liberator transition. Bunker placement is a little bit exposed there. Does get taken out. The SCV holding the choke point, though. The Zealots do derp around a little bit. In the middle, a few Marauders get caught by the army. But that's all a distraction. Ryung says, Doom Drop, baby. He wants to EMP that Nexus to stop the recall. Does he get it? Yep, he does. It's a little slow, but better late than never. It's going to be right on top of the tech. The Stalker Zealot Disruptor trying to come forward. Ryung's just going to try and dodge backwards against these balls. Good Disruptor shot so far by uh, Trigger, but... Man, he's losing his, his main base, and that's a big, big problem. Stalkers, DTs, a Disruptor comes forward. Oh, almost got his own Dark Templar. Nice scan there for Ryung. Ryung is all over it, man. Great comeback this game for Ryung. He was definitely up against the ropes. Trigger had a fantastic clean early game. 
but he committed too many zealots on the left into a bad fight and then over committed with his main army at the same time it's always hard to push against the terran and it's hard to pick when and where to fight but you can see here ryung did a great job of defending i think the siege tank scared trigger made it hard for him to gauge can i push in you feel like with those long-range siege tanks defending, it's much more if I commit in here, it's very hard to ever like pull back. Once I, once I go in, I'm in there, I'm committed because those tanks outrange my army. Not a situation most Protoss are used to. Most Protoss with the Colossi and Disruptor have the longer range army. They can poke and prod and kind of force an awkward situation and feel it out. But uh, this has just been too strong for Ryung. And uh, unfortunate for Trigger, who had a pretty good showing. I feel like that was a scary early game. He held down okay for a while, and then just as things went a bit later, started to fall apart. Ryung not only defeats Trigger, he also preserves his own life. All right, all right, let's go. Rainer coming out now, Ryung getting a chance to knock off a second player. You can see those lives up the very top of the screen in the overlay, guys. I know it's a little bit weird changing from the, my, my in-game replay overlay to this one. I do apologize for the quality. I know it's not fantastic. Obviously, this is a, a feed. A not so clean feed that we're going to be casting off since we aren't able to get the replays consistently. Um, Rainer, a man of the world, never seems to be at the same computer for two days in a row. And uh, the admin's a bit slow to get me the replays. But despite that, hopefully we can enjoy some high level StarCraft, even if it's a little pixely. I especially apologize to those watching on 60 inch TVs. This might be one where you want to get your mobile phone out, you know, get your... Get your little phone screen out. Something that's going to not look quite as uh, as pixely, but we'll see how we go. Obviously, I'm still recording in 4K, but uh, doesn't magically remove the pixels from the feed. Anyways, link speed on the way very quickly. Looks like Rainer was maybe expecting one of those uh, two racks Reaper wall off, uh, you know, builds. So he's played very, very consistent, safe with the, the super fast link speed gas pool opening by the looks of it. Going to be delaying his third base a little bit. Has queens out early. Does limit himself from taking damage, but look at that. SCV blocks his third attempt, so he has to go take the gas there. Now, Ryung, of course, is a very highly ranked Terran, and he has incredibly good technical late game knowledge, but he doesn't have the ability to dance in the APM war with the best, like Maru or Raynor. You know, those, those guys with the push and pull and the action, he does struggle to keep up with their raw physical gifts, one could call it, right? Their, their speed as a player. Oh, Raynor! Rainer just lost his drone to the drill of that SCV. That hurts. Ling's flooding across the map. Three Ling's going to go after the Reaper. The other five Ling's going towards the natural. I think Ryung has just started his first Hellion. He went Starport and second gas before Hellions. Greedy boy. But because the Reaper scouted it, it's fine. He sees what's happening. And he's able to uh, basically just pull up to the high ground. Drop his mules on the high ground as well. Lifts off the command center. And as those Hellions come out, he chases it off. So this is a good opening, I think, for Ryung. Gets away with the greed pretty well. That SCV is going to get spotted by the Overlord. Rainer should be catching that, and he does. Yeah, those Lings are going to immediately redirect when it goes under the Overlord. Hellions are trying to at least punish the Lings, but Rainer is pretty on point. Doesn't lose any Zerglings just yet. Rainer actually loves this map. I, for a long time, said he must hate it because he's lost a bunch of big tournaments, Game 5s, in, against Terrans on this map, or almost lost them. But he actually really enjoys it. Um, I think he just likes some of the big wide open spaces on the sides. The expansion patterns seem okay for him. And he's actually going to go roaches. Oh, okay. That's a pretty quick roach warren. So he's going to go for a roach style to open up. He does like that to kind of control the map and the small push path on it. Chat's asking if Ryung plays with a standing desk. I'm pretty sure he's sitting, guys. I can't imagine he's standing there. Lair is on the way as well. Second gas going down. Interesting kind of setup with such an early Roach Warren and Lair for Rainer. It makes me wonder if he's thinking about doing some sort of kind of faster Roach Speed attack. It's rare to do that without double upgrades, but you can always go like single Evo Carapace Roach Speed shove. Um, it's not particularly common, but it is an option. For now, just a few Roaches to defend the Hellion Pokes. Sporecrawlers going down at each base to defend the Banshees. And a pretty solid opening for Rainer. He's up six workers right now. Trying to build a couple more of those. Third base is going down to land for Ryung. So I don't think Ryung is in a bad position at all. And that's pretty rare against Rainer in an early game Zerg vs. Terran. Hellion's being very patient. Not over committing just yet. Now, how do you try to finish off Rainer on this map? Well, 8-rack seems to be a common method of trying to carry the victory through on this map without letting the Zerg get out of control. But I think once you see that it is going to be Roach play, 
And you want to spot that sooner rather than later, Isriang. I believe you, you swap to something more like a, a maxed out push. And what's been kind of common there is players basically taking a fourth command center, but not getting the second factory. And really just getting a gigantic army of marines, tanks, and liberators. And trying to get very good positions on the map and force those roaches into some bad fights. The Zerglin gets an SCV and pushes the mule back. Banshees get distracted. Oh, one of the Banshees goes down. Nice start for Rainer. Ryung is not going to be happy with that. Roach speeds there. Double Evo's coming up. I don't know what upgrades are on the way. Ooh, okay. Marine tank, 1-1. One, one. Melee carapace. Okay, he's not even going to go range, so he's just going to get a handful of Roach Ravager just to try to scare Ryung into being more defensive, and he's already going to go straight back into Ling Bane. This is almost like a Roach Ravager fake out, where you're trying to get Ryung to adjust his game plan, but you actually are going essentially a Ling Bane normal build order with a handful of Roaches. He's doing it quite greedily. Already going to 75 drones. Poof, Rainer's Greed knows no bounds. Very hard to keep him contained in that regard. Hellion does go down to the Roaches. Creep is starting to spread all over the place. Banshee's getting very damaged as well. Of course, Baneling speed being delayed is one of the big problems with these sort of Roach back into Ling Bane builds. We'll see what happens. Chat saying, I actually think he purposely walked his Roaches into the scan to show them. And I totally agree with Twitch chat there. Because he, I, I think, like we said, he's not going 1-1 range. He's trying to get Ryung to adjust in a certain way. Ryung is still playing an 8 barracks build, by the way. Nice Overlord Snipe. Very well worth it. So, Rain is already up at 83 drones. Uh, he's going in Infestation Pit. But Ryung is going 2-2-8 racks. Now, do we see Tech Labs come down on those barracks? I'm watching the production tab because the barracks are about to finish. Do we see... If we see Tech... I don't think we're going to see Tech Labs. I think he's just doing a 3-base Marine tank all in. That kind of counters Rainer's style, because I do think Rainer's not got that many roaches. Tech Labs are going down. Oh, he's going to go for Marauders. Okay, interesting. So Ryung is going to try to make a bit of a, a slower play. That does give Rainer time to get Hive. Hive means Vipers. Vipers means Siege Tanks can get Blinding Clouded, and that can be very powerful. More Depots building at the third here. Ryung has not started the fourth command center, and it's past eight minutes. It feels like Ryung just wants to do a big giant three base push and he just wants to kill Reyna with it. Ryung does like his big pushes in this matchup. I think this is his problem matchup. The main matchup that holds Ryung back is Zerg versus Terran because of the mechanical nature of it. And what do you do if you're slower than your opponent? You try to simplify things. You don't want to get trapped in a five base versus five base multi-prong war. You instead say, okay, let's just get a big army. Hopefully surprise him with this giant marine marauder tank push. And uh, that's going to make things a bit more easy for me to control the pace of the action. I'm going to do one big shove, thrust down the middle. And if I can win that fight with perfect positioning, then I'll be okay. Quite a few Ravagers still morphing. Fascinating that Rainer is going so heavy on the Ravagers. Bailing Speed is, of course, finished. And uh, he's still building drones. My gosh, Rainer. I always feel like... No matter what his opponent's doing, he doesn't care. He's like, 95 drones, I need it. It's like, dude, it's a three base all in. Do you really need 30 workers more than your opponent? I, 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 and you guys have heard me shout at Rainer about this so many times. And there's two things going on. Number one, if you lose to Ryung, this is so bad for your team. You guys are already down a life. Number two, Rainer has a magic ability to get out of trouble even when he's super greedy. He's so good with his engagements. Let's see if he can see this. It's coming forward. His army's a bit out of position right now. He's got to set up that flanky flank. Ryung's shoving so deep. Ryung is shoving so deep. Mass Baneling's trying to morph. Rainer has to buy time for himself. He's got Biles. Takes out the front siege tank. Very nicely done. The bio coming forward. Rainer may have to abandon that hatchery. I think he probably should. Oh, another big nasty tank shot. I think we've got two blinding clouds available. And that's what Rain is going to look for when he goes in for the engagement. It's very hard to handle this, though. He's got to come in from multiple angles right now. The Vipers... Oh, they're exposed! Ryung gets a Viper! 
Ryung shoving forward right now. Banelings trying to roll in. They actually kill the two siege tanks. Not the best target for the Banelings, but at least it gets rid of some of the artillery there. Rain is cutting off the reinforce right now. Very nice move. Roaches do intercept. Now, Marine Marauder should do okay versus Roaches, but that is not right, quite right in terms of numbers. Oh, Banelings clears some hell that Marine. Blinding Cloud did go down there as well. More Banelings trying to morph up against the ropes right now. Is Rainer. Queens are on the front line. More Banelings morphing. Lings trying to come in. The Hellbats do get cleaned. There's more Marines there behind it. There are Roaches coming back. He's coming in with everything. If the Lings and Ravages can take out the tanks, this is going to clean things up for him. Biles take out the siege tanks. The Marines are held. And Rainer may be out of the woods. He's up in army supply right now. He's lost one hatchery, but I don't think that matters. He's still up 20 workers, and he has Ultralisks building as well in the midst of this. Ultras will smash through the Marines. There's not a big Marauder count, and the first Ultras are actually already here. Kindness Plating is almost out. Very nice play from Rainer to hold on. Give him a short rush distance. Give him a 30 worker advantage when he's not even ahead in the game. He'll still hold because his name's Rainer, and the man is on fire right now. The man is ridiculously powerful at this point in StarCraft 2. There's a reason why he crushed Game is 8. There's a reason why he crushed Home Story Cup. It's the sort of Rainer that really cares about winning. It's kind of a dumb way of putting it. Obviously, he always cares about winning. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's powerful. I mean, what's what's Ryan going to do here? Parasitic Bob with the Medivac. Oh, does do a good split. He's trying to just start a step away. Those libs could do something against the Ultras. But look at the Biles. They'll land on him. First lib goes down almost immediately. And he does actually force Rainer back for now, but of course, three base Terran, mining out the main, mining out the natural, and uh, gets a few Ravages on the disengage, not bad, Rainer squeezes an Infester into the mix, not a bad move at all. Morphing more Banelings on the front, three, three upgrades are coming in, Infester, Ravager, Ultra, and Baneling all getting in the mix right now. SCV's gonna rotate down to this left base. Ooh-wee. Okay. All right, let's see how this goes. The Ultra Baneling's going to try to gather up the tanks, the libs, and the bio. All trying to spread there. Ryung is basically banking on one game plan. He needs Rainer to chuck a Zerg. You spread out, set up the perfect defense. Rainer's going to A-move, throw his whole army away somehow into a disgusting meat grinder, and then you counterattack and win the game. We talk about this a lot because when you're playing, even at high levels, uh, people make that mistake all the time. Rainer is an expert, though, at knowing when to engage, when to disengage. It's really hard to catch Rainer out chucking a Zerg. Uh, I think when he's playing Maru, sometimes he chucks a Zerg because he's so traumatized by Maru's late game that he, he sometimes just starts chucking armies away in the mid game, desperately trying to force the game to end when he doesn't need to. But against Ryung, I think he's in his comfort zone. I don't think he's intimidated by Ryung at all. And I think he's looking forward to eliminating this Korean player from the lineup. Biles do take out a Liberator. It's a lot of tanks and libs. Pretty good bio spread. Fungal cleans up a few Marauders on the bottom side. More Biles, Lings, Banes, and Ultras coming in right now. Parasitic Bombs landing as well. The Marines and the Marauders are getting broken through. Are they, though? Three tanks survive. A pack of Marauders survives. That was actually a sick fight for Ryung. <laughs> Ryung's off an army supply. What now? What? How? I mean, the Remax is still so scary. Six Ultras and a Master Lings is coming. Those Vipers gathering energy. The Metavax are out of juice. The Tanks and the Libs are spreading right now. The Bio is mostly Marauders, which means there's not much to deal with Zerglings right now. Lings and Ravagers running in. And you can see how powerful they are when there's no many, not many Marines to deal with it. A Lib goes down, a Tank goes down, as does a Metavax. The Marauders trying to punish, but they don't have the same firepower of the Marines. They are more for tanking. And there we go. Queens and Ravagers trying to come down. Bile on the Liberator does land but uh oh man it feels like rainer's got such a big army supply i guess it's just all in production there we go ultra's starting to come on in vipe is one of those i think has max energy yep abducting uh liberator and parasitic bombing a medevac and it looks like ryung's desperate last ditch effort is running out of steam look at the production tab there's three corruptors and a random mutilisk there i think the liberators are giving so much trouble to rainer he's realizing ravages are not the ideal way to deal with this Getting a few Corruptors out will be great. The Mutalisk is obviously a misclick. Burrow is on the way as well. And Rainer does have his 2-3 upgrades finished. 3-3 is finished for Ryung. Ryung may have a fourth base down, but that's his main base that lifted, remember. Infest is up front. Watch for the Fungal! Watch for the Fungal! Oh, nice Fungal there. The Slug runs to the front line and throws some green goop all over his opponent's face. Much like when you were in third grade, forced to sit next to that weird kid, Eric. 
and he'd always try to rub his boogers on you. That's essentially what the Infester is. The Infester is that kid who not only tries to copy your homework, he also tries to rub boogers on you or at least on the side of your desk while you're trying to do your test. You're like, God damn it, Eric, why are you such a weirdo, man? And that's essentially the discomfort you feel if a fungal hits you on the face. Don't be that guy, children out there listening. Don't, don't be Eric. Don't learn from him. Be a cool person in the classroom. Don't put boogers on people. Put them in the bin. Or just don't pick them with your finger at all. That's that's also kind of nice. There was always some. There was always a lot of lot of kids who just had crusty boogers all over their face and or hands for like all of the first few years of school. I feel. Anyways, um, speaking of crusty boogers, Ryung's economy is looking a bit crusty right now. Rainer is starting to bank up. Rainer has 98 workers, but. His army's smaller, there's ghosts coming out. There's always the chance Rainer chucks, chucks a bit of a doopy doop here. Oh, no, no, that bio way too clumped up in the mineral line. Baneling's getting mad value. The blinding cloud's forcing the bio to break backwards. Amazing spready from Ryung. And uh, Rainer takes a kind of crazy fight, but I think killing the command center in the midst of it and the ability to just remax, it's these small fights that are going to favor Rainer and his big economy advantage in the long run. Don't take one big fight where the, the Terran wants it. Go in for these skirmishes. Another Blinding Cloud. Snipe does pop off from one of the Ultralisks, but there's a lot more Ultras where that came from. Bile spreading across the front line, trying to cleave through. The Corruptors are also killing the Liberators, or at least damaging them. Are those Liberators about to kill a Corruptor? That's the first time I've ever seen that. And Raynor actually spreads the Corruptor at the last second to keep it alive because he's Raynor. Doesn't quite lose it. And Ryong pulling back into his seat, looking a little bit uncomfortable there. But he's still got a chance. If he can win the next game, he can still eliminate Rainer, even though he's himself being eliminated. All right, guys, going into the next game, Ryung wants to eliminate Rainer. He is not fighting for his own life. He's essentially what was the perk called in Call of Duty, where you'd fall to the when you die, you'd be on the ground with a pistol. What was that perk called? Let me know. Oh, ooh, nice! He gets the drone. He blocks the extractor trick. Very nice. But I feel like with this format, that's essentially what you're doing. If you lose your first map in your best of two. You've got the, the, the Martyr perk or Last Stand, I think. Yeah, I think it was called Last Stand. Or the, <laughs> or the Drop the Grenade one as well was actually a funny one. Uh, I miss playing like Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 uh, multiplayer lobbies, fun games. Oh, Reaper's still denying the third. Dude, he's doing a really good job. Yeah. Yeah, I think Martyrdom was the grenade one. I think Last Stand is what I was originally thinking of. The Reaper did uh, manage to delay that for a good 30 seconds, force the Queens out, which of course can delete Creep as well as Injects. Once again, going 3cc. Uh, I don't feel like the Hellion Banshee did well last game. And I gotta say, guys, I really consistently feel like Hellion Banshee does terribly versus Rainer. I'm, I'm always surprised that people go for it against him. And yet they keep doing it. And I understand why you do it against Dark. He's very aggressive. When was the last time Rainer tried to kill someone early on in the Zerg vs. Terran? I'm just going to sit here and wait while the, the you know, silence echoes around the room. Um, I, I can't remember. Uh, I guess the Baneling bust vs. Beyond, I remember him doing, but that was specifically because Beyond kept doing the exact same build over and over again. And uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, Hellion's on the way. Banshees as well. Third command center is finished, morphing into an orbital command. Hellions are building two at a time. Rain is going to sack the Overlord in. Interesting. Normally you could just sneak a Ling across to get the scouting info. Not really worth losing an Overlord, but, you know, hey, it's not too bad. He does need to build more Overlords. He's going to be supply blocked. Rainer, careful, my friend. His third hatchery does give him a little bit of supply as it finishes now, which keeps him from being not too supply blocked, but uh, we'll need to keep those Overlords building. I would say Rain is actually pretty fantastic when it comes to supply blocks. When I watched him at Gamers 8, he did not get supply blocked once. It was really impressive. I say once. I mean, he probably did once, but I didn't notice any supply blocks. Whereas with Dark, there was a lot of supply blocks. A few of the other Zergs got supply blocked at crucial moments. Just even small ones for like Serral and Solar and stuff. But uh, Rain has been very on point with hitting that constant overload production. And you see he's got a very small supply gap, yet he's keeping it very tight. All right. Oh, double armory mech! Oh, Ryung! Off one factory? I don't I don't know if I've ever agreed with going one factory double armory. I always feel like you should go three factories first. 
But we'll see. Maybe maybe he has a good 170 supply when the 2-2 timing happens. Maybe he can pull that off. He's going for a Raven, which I love. If you're playing a slow mech style, you should always go for a Raven. But he's already opened two Banshees, and I, I just don't think those Banshees are going to do anything for him. So definitely going to be interesting. One of the problems with going double armory this early is you are vulnerable to dying to a lot of things, number one. The other one is when your 2-2 finishes, like, like if you actually have the money to start 1-1 and then 2-2 immediately when the armories finish, guess what? Your 2-2 is finished before you're even ready to go fight. So <laughs> I kind of feel like your upgrades are almost too early, but we'll see how it goes. Ryung might be planning to play like a fast 4 base style. And in that case, it could work out. Rain is going Spire. Ooh, he's been enjoying Mutalisks lately. He feels like Muta's given the ability to play a mobile style and stop the opponent from turtling up too much. But I don't think he knows it's mech right now. So definitely something where he's famous for not scouting that much, Rainer. Like with Overseers to check what's happening. He will not check if it's bio or mech. He's just focusing on defending and macroing greedily. Now, arguably, you can beat mech with Lingbane Muta. But uh, it's not the optimal style by any means. All right, the Hellion Raven... Clearing creep just passively there. Rain is casually going to 80 workers. Double Evo and a Rotorn. He knows he's up against Mac. Okay, he does indeed know what's happening. All right. Raven, Hellion still looking for damage. You need to start some Thors pretty soon, Ryong. And he does. He starts up two Thors for safety. Very well done. He doesn't want to go too many. Usually just two Thors and then start pumping tanks. Wait, does he not have any tanks out? Oh, his factories are so late, aren't they? 1-1 one, one is pretty far along, though, which is nice. But uh, Roach Speed's going to be done in about a minute and a half. And when that Roach Speed's done, there could be a big Roach attack, depending on how many Mutalisks Reyna builds. So it's seven Mutas to start off. Engineering Bay starts up right now, so we can't build turrets just yet. Fourth Command Center starts as well, right on about seven minutes. It's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Plus one melee, plus one range for Rainer. I don't believe he's gone for Baneling speed yet. There we go. Starts it up. 85 drones. With eight more. He's going to 93 workers. And you know what? That's going to do well. He's going to get a very beastly economy up. Double Thor drop. Old school. Okay. There's only seven muters coming out. So the Thors should be able to defend against that. As long as they're not swarmed on the ground at the same time. Turrets are building i don't know where those mutalisks are okay they are on the bottom side of the map here we go about to enter the main base that turret should finish just barely in time aliens and the raven still clearing up creep the thors are going to go for a drop but now they're boosting home he was not expecting mutalisks he's played safe against it but he was not expecting it otherwise those thor drops would have been at home defending and she's going to go down as well rainer oh nice cloak at the last second good response there by ryong that's a few more scvs here as well Seven workers, big disruption on the gas mining. Ryung's trying to move out to take that fourth base. The Thor drops are going to come down. He's boosting them forwards, and he should be in single fire mode against Mutalisks. I know it sounds silly, but unless they have a really big pack of Muters, single fire is actually going to kill them a lot quicker than this splash damage, unless Rainer messes up and clumps them really badly. Uh oh. Okay, anti armor missile into auto turret. And the Thor's still in splash damage mode. Rainer did not overcommit to muters at all. He's just going mass Roach Ravager Ling Bane. He's already at 98 drones. He is maxed out. Roach speed. Plus one range is going to finish. Did he? His plus one melee as well. His hive's on the way. And he's just playing mass Ravager Ling Bane. You need so many tanks as Ryong here. I don't think he's there just yet. The Hellions do at least intercept this, which is good. And I think he's lost his Banshees, remember. Those muters did a very good job. Maybe he has one or two left. Tank's trying to come forward. One Banshee is here. Banelings are going in. Bit of a crazy attack for Rainer, but he's rich, so he feels like any trade is a good trade. Nice planetary fortress micro with the in and out. The Mutas came in and killed a missile turret at the same time, though. You can see in the picture in the picture, he was not watching on the bottom. He didn't repair. He was so focused on the top. Oh, Ryung's multitasking, failing him a little bit there. Yes, three Mutalisks died to kill the turret, because obviously seven, eight Mutas is not that many. But the Thors are finally going to clean it up. But he's lost his fourth. He's lost 26 workers. And Rainer is rich. He can just go again. This needed to be better set up on the defense for Ryung. He needed those tanks to be spread out a little bit more and maybe slightly in front of the planetary. It's also an argument why sometimes you want to go orbital on the fourth base so you can lift it to not die against the Banelings. Tanks running forward. Where are the Hellions? Oh no! The Lings are just swarming over his siege tanks. So many free kills there. Their Hellions were way out of position. Great move by Rainer. Dives in and Ryung's looking dead Z's here. Rainer says, okay, you killed Trigger, but now I'm going to kill you 2-0, mate. Get on out here. 
And I wonder, I do wonder, you know, who is going to come in next for onside? Is it going to be... Obviously, maybe Ryung brings it back with a crazy mech comeback. We've seen Maru do it first, Rainer. But uh, I think Maru hard counters Rainer a lot of the time. Right now, it's god tier Rainer, though, so it could really give troubles. Solar probably not wanting the ZVZ. Nice defense so far here for Ryung. No, he's holding on. He's actually holding on pretty nicely. Oh, man, it's just, just those last few Banelings trickled into the Hellions and blew them up. Those two Thors, those two tanks hold on strong. New Command Center is going to move out. But Rainer on 96 workers has almost got plus two melee, plus two range, and Vipers. And most importantly, you saw that. He's droning a base right next to Ryung's base. He realizes Ryung's whole game plan is going to be like just turtling for the end game. And he's like, well, maybe, maybe you survived the end game. I'm going to take the resources off your side of the map already. And that's something, you know, I was, I was talking to Rainer after we won game is eight. I was like, fuck, man, you mining out those four bases. You know that gets me excited. And he was like, yeah, I know. I know, pig. I know you get excited. I was like, oh, I was like, you make me so happy, Rainer. You I was like, I was literally giddy. And he's just like shaking his head. He's like, fucking, uh, you could tell he was uncomfortable knowing that he'd made a, a StarCraft commentator so goddamn turgid by uh, doing a certain thing. But hey, you guys have been hearing me complain about it for years and finally a few of the players are doing it. Ravager Bane's gonna roll in. Pretty good positioning, but the Banelings will find the mineral line nonetheless. And any work as he gets, irreplaceable for the Ryung. Down on 48 SCVs. And uh, the, the Hellbats, the Thors, the tanks there getting very, very efficient trades. But in the big picture, when your opponent's got seven, eight bases, 96 workers, 92 workers, sorry, he's gonna overwhelm. Yeah, it, it, it's, it always is a nice feeling when you shout about something casting games for like many years and then the players start to actually do it. I um, feel like there used to be a quicker turnaround in these sorts of things. I remember getting players the to, to start doing plasma shield upgrades back in 2016 made me very happy, but that faded away for a while. It recently came back with Showtime and a few others. Here we go. Oh, look at this spread. Look at the Vipers. Blinding Clouds are going to be scary here. Oh, no. Get He's going to lift the command center. The STVs are still exposed, though. The Bailings are very clumped. The tanks get some big shots off, but Blinding Clouds go deep, man. The hell that spread back. They come forward. Pretty good defensive setups by Ryung, man. Pretty good defensive setups, but you could tell Rainer just felt so safe this game. He didn't feel any pressure. And when Rainer doesn't feel any pressure and gets that economy rolling, it is just absolutely monstrous. A few more Thors building transformation servers as well. Ravager Bane forcing the liftoffs constantly. It's hard to keep that tank counting up. You need enough Hellions to guard against the Zerglings, but you need enough tanks to guard against the Banelings and Ravagers and Roaches. Thors mixed in in case there's an air swap, which is what he's kind of worried about right now. And indeed, we see a Great Aspire on that production tab. Um, yeah, I would definitely send Maru out if I was Crank, if I was the onside captain um as the next player because he has i think about a two to one maybe slightly higher than that win rate versus rainer but on the other hand i'm most excited to see that match because they like they haven't played recently when rainer's been on fire uh oh oh uh oh nice run by on the right side oh those lings getting a lot of damage here we go bailing ravager viper another blinding cut no the thor's shot down the viper he actually drops hellbats on the roach ravager very cute move there by Ryung. oh that was a stunning engagement by Ryung, and he does have a fourth up he could just get one more base up. I feel like he could get back in this game, maybe. But man, Rainer is even mining the gas on that bottom base. I do feel Rainer should try to take some of these top bases as well if he can. But uh, the fact that he's mining that base out on the bottom and Ryung doesn't even know about it is huge. I think Ryung's about to find it. I think Ryung may now realize what's happening because he's sending, I think, some Hellbats or something down there. He's going to counter push through the middle. Is he actually going to try to win with the counter push? Looks like it. He's decided his economy is too small. He's got to make it or break it right now. There's not many Banelings ready. The Queens get caught out. Nice moves. Very nice moves on the Metavax. There's only a few Siege Tanks. That's the problem right now. And look at the Backstab. Observer, Backstab, please. Ryung's production line just got ruined. His, his whole rally just got cleaned up by a big mass of Zerglings. Two more tanks do come out. A lot of SCVs going down. And he's going to take out... Yeah, both of those Siege Tanks nicely done. That's, that's really good. Uh, denying a base here is Ryung. He's trying to bait... Rainer into taking a bad fight. I would like to see a bit more of a spread on those Hellbats. Those Hellbats in the top are a bit too clumped. If Banelings find that center of mass, it's going to be very bad for Ryung. Ah, two tanks sieging that base on the bottom. Dude, the fact that Ryung made this as close as he did, I wonder if Maru's going to look at this and go like, yeah, let's go, Mech. Interesting stats on the screen. A bit too hard for me to pass all of that information, so we're just going to ignore it for now, guys. Hopefully you get something out of that. 
And Vipers Ravages Beans looking at coming forward. Nice Blinding Cloud to start. Good counter. Held that drop on the Ravages, though. Thor's getting Blinding Clouded, as do the front tanks. Hellbats do get cleaned up. Massling run by in the top right, though. And again, that base gets forced to lift. Ryung back to very little mining. The Ravagers looking for their big juicy Biles across that Thor line. Ooh, peppering the units, but not quite getting the big the big Kahuna hit that he needs to finish off those units. Hellions clean up a Roach run by as well. Reyna, funnily enough, has not got any bank left. That he's losing a hatchery. He's also lost the other high ground one. And that bottom right hatchery is in trouble. Dude, if Ryung brings this game back, this is the most god-tier comeback for Ryung to do that. That is insane. Now, um, a very good point in chat from Printf. He's like, dude, why wouldn't you just keep the Banelings back? So yeah, against this, you actually are meant to keep a reserve of Banelings with your Ravages or Hydras in the back line so that when they drop the Hellbats, you can instantly blow them up and your Ravages and Roaches can still run forward to clean up the tanks and Thors. But he hasn't been doing that. His hell is, he's kind of stuck in the mode of, oh, Banelings need to run forward to clean up those Hellbats. Uh, he's going to lose this bottom base finally. That's pretty expensive for Rainer. He's still way up in supply. But because he's on such a basic army, he's struggling to find the correct engagement. This ridge line just seems like an area he doesn't want to fight. Oh, links around. Rainer actually preserves his bottom base. He does lose 19 workers there. He's down to 68 drones. He's only up 20 army supply. Part of me still worries this is somehow possible uh, for, for Ryung to bring it back. The other part says, no, no, it's definitely not. Oh, Ryung, he split his army. He split way too much army home. And now, now Rainer says, yeah, you split too much army. Blinding clouds all over the tanks. Even though it wears off in the middle of the battle, Rainer's backstabs were just too good. Ryung lets up a sigh of frustration. He put in a really good fight, though. And Rainer, you can see, looking very focused. He's like, why was that so hard? Screw mech, man. Screw it. All right, they've brought out Rainer. Who would have known? He's still alive. That's who they've brought out. On size brought out Maru. And it's on Neo Humanity. Now, I don't know if the maps are decided ahead of time or how exactly this works on the map picks. Maybe someone can let me know in the comments. Um, obviously, as the caster, you'd think I'd do my research, but this is such a confusing format already. Um, it is what it is. So it's it's definitely going to be interesting because we know Rainer hates this map. He always vetoes it. We know Mara is the king of late game. This map is so good for late game. Rainer also just struggled against mech. And I feel like... Rainer should approach this as, okay, I'm probably going to lose this game. But if I win the next, I trade with Maru. I eliminate him. He eliminates me. We're still even. And then it has to be uh, Serral and Sola playing in the next match. And then there's, of course, a revive available after that. Now, remember, the overall scoreboard is up the very top, guys. Both players have three of those purple circles left, three pips left. So three lives left for both sides. You take a map, you take a life. And it's going to be two maps played between these two players no matter what. Um, obviously, between the two and the best of two, that's the scoreboard next to the Rainer and Maru name at the bottom. So, it's going to be a hatchery into a pool. Was this a 15 hatch, 15 pool, guys? I was not paying attention. Looks like he's going to go three hatch, gasless. Ooh, is this Dark's build? Dark's been doing this build on this match, on this map. And then he goes like gasless into roaches. Is this good versus the double Reaper build, though? Interesting. I always thought the other hatchery was better than that one. But uh, it does have nasty push paths into it, so I can kind of understand why you'd want this more wide open base here that also allows you to spread creep to the middle of the map nice and quick. Two queens and some zerglings are on the way. I love... I, I, I'm worried that my YouTube uh, viewers are not going to be able to understand what's happening in this series because people in Twitch are definitely struggling. Is it game three or zero zero? It can't be both. Uh, we just explained that but that's okay guys uh <laughs> it's the third series the third best of two being played here so far trigger and ring have been eliminated and maru's in for his very first game seeing if he can knock rainer out rainer's already had to win a series for his team oh another drone how is rainer so consistently losing drones he almost lost a second one as well this is really bad here we go queen's coming in Hitting those Reapers. Ooh, going for the bunker. Is this worth it? I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts in the comments on that. I really feel like if the Zerg just kind of drones up and chills, I don't think the bunker's a big issue. But you have to be very patient with when you fight it. And oh, he gets a Marine as well. Okay, Marine does even more damage than a Reaper, I'm pretty sure. Obviously, it's more fragile. 
There it is. Queens have taken a lot of damage. This is a very good micro. This is going to force a bunch of Zerglings out of Rainer. And you know what? The real scary thing is those Reapers are going to hop out of the bunker and jump in the main. When you fully commit to it, yeah. He's like, ha, oh, your Queens are out of position, idiot. And he dives the main. That's what you need to watch out for in this scenario. Oh, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. I think if the Zerg handles it perfectly, it's not the greatest move. But oh my god, he just killed six drones. Rainer is going to be mouthing. He's going to be so pierced. Oh my lord. I, I tried to censor myself. I couldn't. There was no other word. Peeved would not have been a strong enough word. That is a disaster of an opening for Rainer. He is playing gasless. It's a very greedy build, so you can argue, oh, he should be okay. But he's already been forced to build like eight to ten Zerglings and like four Queens. That's a, a very frustrating turn of events. I mean, units lost type looks pretty similar. But you got to realize that losing workers that early is very frustrating. It's not the way Rainer wanted things to start. So I'm hoping it hasn't disrupted his tempo too much. Now, on the other hand, uh, Maru is not going Banshees, which I love. You guys know I hate people playing Banshees versus Rainer. I think he handles them so well every game. He's going Widow Mind Drops. I think this is a great way to play. He's going Stim and three Marines at a time. So it looks like he's going to play Bio Mine here. Um, only going to late game if the game requires it. Maru very rarely turtles to late game from the start. He always tries to make plays in the early and mid game and he goes there when it's necessary. And that's part of what makes him so scary. Uh, Link Speed does now start up for Reyna. He's up on 47 workers. I mean, his work account's great, but you gotta remember with this style, your tech is so late, your gas was so late that your economy can be very high, but then you're gonna have to start throwing down all these buildings and things that you skipped and every building you build, choose up a drone. So what you'll see is the Zerg gets a massive worker advantage and then their income kind of just stalls out and their work account stalls out for like a minute or two while they add all the buildings necessary does see some links come out with his slow zergling scouts five more drones very greedy for rainer right now but i guess his link speed's not done so he's deciding to just do queens okay here we go widow mine drops coming in marines going forward cleaning up the creep tumors okay he's gonna go for a drippy droppy oh gets one of the widow mines nicely done second one does fire third one also is gonna fire but just on zerglings and uh he doesn't spread very well but that's okay that was a good enough hold rain is on 61 drones versus 43 i actually think rain is winning this game right now if he can just get ready for the next step and that's the problem because Lair's just started evos have just finished bainly Ness hasn't started he needs to get to that next step right now i usually prefer roaches off these sort of openings um but if he can get up, you know, Baneling Nest, Bane Speed 1-1, one, one, he could be okay. He's got to build a lot of Zerglings, though. Right now, Rain is very dangerous in this position, or very uh, fragile. He doesn't have many transfusers. His Queens did not have a lot of energy. He's killing a few Marines, but where are the Zerglings? They're so far away right now. Another Queen there, very weak in the red. But a lot of the Marines do go down. Widowmine Drop comes back in. Great handling. Oh, Maru's doing some retargeting magic, though. He's doing some retargeting magic. And oh, Spore Trick. Rainer says, F you, I blocked it. You take that long to fire and I will make sure that shot gets wasted. Uh, Rainer's still on 66 drones. He's got a fourth hatchery on the way. He handled it okay. He lost a couple of queens, but I think he's actually kind of uh, slightly ahead in this game just because he did handle that Widow Mine drop so well. He did the Spore Quiller trick very well. This is fantastic play from Rainer. This is really, really well done. Um, Got to remember, Neo Humanity, he's going to feel pressured to do more. Just being in a good spot, not going to be nearly enough for Rainer against someone that usually has his number like Maru. Oh, I love the Ling hiding there. Maru does see it, though. That's a very cute attempt for Rainer. He's going to play Mutalisks. Yeah, he wants to get the mobility going. I mean, if he feels like he's worried about his opponent turtling, Mutas are Rainer's go-to play. He's got a drop a lot on the way as well, so he's thinking about doing a Baneling drop or maybe even just a little Zergling elevator. Not a bad way to do it. I'd like to see him do it when other stuff's happening though that's when it'll be most effective you do it on its own it's not that useful but you drop those in there when other things are happening it's a very very cheap expendable harassment just forces maru to deal with it and could potentially get a few scvs four more barracks on the way right now that means he's got to be going eight racks then surely so it looks like an eight racks three command center style maru looking for the big hefty boy production Rainer takes a fight. 1-1 one, one versus 1-1. One, one. I actually think it was okay for him. Doesn't look that clean when the Marines are in the corner, but there wasn't quite the critical mass to gun those Zerglings down as fast as they wanted to. Rainer's going to go for the rich gas base in the middle. This is my least favorite base. I think it's basically a free kill for the opponent. Hopefully he takes one in the bottom left as well. Liberator comes in, gets pushed back by the Queens. 
And uh, 2-2. Two, two. Four more drones, seven medalists on the way. Going to 87 workers is Rainer. Against a 73 worker, Terran. He's just started his fourth command center now at the 8.30 minute mark. Maru's going to be looking for some momentum with these big boy pushes. There's some great tank positions on this map. We'll see how he uses them. Ling drop in the natural. Going to show itself. Don't think it's going to get much done. A little bit of mining time. Maybe one or two SCVs. There is a tank there. Tries to drag some tank fire into the grouped SCVs. Doesn't find much. And the Overlord does go down as well. First mute is coming out right now. They're going to go down the left side. Look for a little bit of harassment. I wonder how much Rainer commits to those muters. Does he keep it heavy on the Ling Bane and stay low on the muter count? Or does he start really trying to grow that number? Mass Marine on the way. Wait, 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 wait. He's gone eight, eight reactors. It's, it's a seven or eight reactor play out of Maru, guys. He is playing Mass Marine tank. It is going to be an insane amount of Marines. Backstabbing is the key. Muters, Ling's doing backstabbing and trying to use Bane Ling's to slow down his push on the front. But you've got to be careful. You can't roll into tank range. As I said, that purple rich gas base, always a gimme. It just gets thrown away. Muter's in the main! Muter's in the main! Oh no, Rain is not watching. He loses four Mutalisks just like that. Does get a hit on the Marines on the front of the Banelings, but he loses so many Banelings to do it. Was it worth it? I don't know. These Lings getting cornered by the Marines as well. Rainer, uncharacteristic sloppiness on his Muter control. He's only got three Mutalisks left in that main base. Now remember, Maru's income is lower, but he's got a bigger army. Rainer needs to be efficient. And Rainer, uncharacteristically not watching his Muters, now not watching his Ling run by... And that base there, why is he trying to defend that base? It's such a bad position. He does finally give it up, but I hate that middle rich gas base because of this. It's so easy to siege up. The Ling's actually got ignored and killed five SCVs. Not too bad there for Reyna. He's got new muters coming out right now. He's going to try and group those up. I like this. Going into the small squad of Ling Bane to try to clear up the front running Marines. But that is a giant spready of Marine tank. And it does feel like the momentum is on Maru's side. Look at the supply right now. A big 30 army supply advantage. 2 twos kicking in for Terran. Catching up with the upgrade lead that Rainer had earlier. Rainer's got a few muters here, but he hasn't got any momentum with those units. Maru calmly cleaned up his, his counterattacks and now he's able to focus everything on the front lines. He knows that Rainer is kind of pushed up against the wall. Rainer tries to go forward, does get a few banelings, which was pretty well done. But his queens are getting gunned down. His muters going around the back line at this point. And Rainer is just a bit outnumbered as we see the tanks gunning down the Banelings. Every time they run forward, Maru's doing some good in and out. The Muters get a tank. They get two. Oh, give Rainer a handful of Muters. He will make magic happen. This map's feeling very cramped for him right now, though. The front on nature allowing this push to be so scary. Banelings try to roll in from many different sides. There's just one core of Marines and they survive. They survive. They start redropping. Links clean up the tanks. But uh oh, more Marines get in here before he can deal with the Liberators. That might just be it. If Maru can push in and deny that base on the right, he's going to eliminate the last bastion of Reyna's economy. Reyna's economy on the right side, very exposed. Drones getting gunned down. He's trying to morph new Banelings, but they're not ready just yet. The turret comes up. A siege tank saved in the medevac. Maru on point right now. A super decisive three base push. And Rainer does try to take out the Lib, gets one, but he loses a Mutalisk for it. He's got some Ling Bane on the right. He's got a base mining in the bottom left, but he's got very few drones that escape. They're all hiding on the right side of this map. Those Libs are sieging up. The Banelings trying to roll in. The Spreadies are fantastic. He burrows some Ling Banelings in the middle. But Maru, with the momentum, pushes through. Puts Rainer on the back foot from the start, right to the finish, and cleans him up. All right, guys, going into the next game, we've got in the top right here, Maru. M -m -m Maru. And he's going to go one Rax. He does this a lot on Babylon. I don't know if I've seen him do this on Sistone. He's going to deny the Overlord. And then he often goes for like a really weird build where he'll do like maybe like a Cyclone Marine drop or like a single Banshee or something like that. It's a few different weird follow-ups he does. Curious to see what he does this time around. Ancient Sister and a much better map for Zerg. So it does feel to me like he gets to pick the first map. Rainer gets to pick the second one or something like that. I'm not 100% sure how they do it. And uh, do you have to go through the maps and play one of each map? before you've used them all, and then you can start, restart from the, the, the go. Not 100% sure on the map rules, but a uh, nice Overlord snipe to start things off. Reyna does start a very quick Ling speed, which is interesting. Uh, against this sort of opening, I often would like delay Ling speed to get a faster third base, and especially save the minerals to squeeze in that replacement Overlord, but Reyna's decided, no, 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 don't want to take any risks, want to make sure I get that Ling speed up as quickly as possible. 
VHT in chat says the first map is predetermined. The second map is the loser's pick. So no wonder they picked Maru for this one, getting Neo Humanity first. But Rainer, very happy to place this turn. A big boy Zerg map. And remember, Rainer might be eliminated now, but he's fighting to eliminate Maru. If he can eliminate it, then uh, then that will be the thing. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I did watch the video recently, random tangent, of the guy who tried to cook a chicken on YouTube by uh, slapping it. Built a machine to slap a chicken. The problem that they ran into was the chicken's structural integrity did not hold up under the force of getting slapped a good uh, 10 million times or whatever it was. So by the time it got hot enough to, to uh, cook, it was basically a paste. Um, so it was more like how to make... how to cook chicken pate than anything else but uh anyways random tangents aside uh it is going to be three hatcheries coming up for rainer cloak on the way for maru you guys know my feelings about cloak against uh rainer however this is a very quick cloak it's super fast it's a little bit sneakier it's harder to read for rainer if he doesn't spot the banshees moving out with those zerglings that he's got spotting then i can actually see it being quite effective so uh, at least it's a, a bit more of banshee with a twist Yeah, sells the bunker. Marines are look going hunting right now. I don't think he moves all the way across the map. That'd be very dangerous. But he's definitely looking to maybe clear a path. The Banshees are coming in behind. The Banshees are coming in behind. They don't get spotted. Yeah, yeah, you can see Rainer's vision. Rainer does not know about the Banshees. The Marines are literally clearing a... a they're escorting the Banshees to the map. But I think I think a Zergling saw it. I think a Zergling saw it. Oh, actually, I think it has longer sight range than the Zergling. So I believe it saw... No, 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 Spore started. He spotted it. Oh, Rainer! Quick eyes, quick hands, great Zergling scouting. Very well done by Rainer. He will be ready. The Queens are moving into the main base, and his drone count's not very good, but now that he knows there's Banshees, he's like, oh, I was being way too safe building lots of Zerglings. Let's hold that drone key down. So he's droning super hard. He has already been a little tricked, I guess, by Maru, so you could say he's a bit further behind than he maybe should be. And uh, the lair's not very quick, which does hurt. Banshee gets a drone, almost dies in the process. You can see that last queen projectile hit the Banshee just after it left detection range. So even though the projectile looked like it hit the Banshee, it didn't actually do any damage. That's like a, an interesting thing. So if the projectile hasn't connected with it and it gets out of detection, then it will not actually take the damage. So Maru barely saving that Banshee so far. Going for a two base all in behind it by the looks of it. Three more barracks on the way. He's going to look for a big old momentum style push. Uh, he did a lot of this against uh, Rainer over in um, Sweden. Back in Sweden a few months back. And Rainer barely came out on top. Managed to hold on in that series. He's got a quick bailing speed. He's at 63 workers. I mean, if Rainer just stops here and makes army, he'll be fine. But it's such an outlandish decision to do a two-base push on such a big map. Rainer might just not expect it, and he might just start droning really hard after he defends this double drop. If he does build any more workers, he's going to be in a rough spot. Good pullback so far by Rainer. Losing a gas is really not that important. Losing the spawning pool sucks. He's only got one queen here. His other queens must have been very far out of position. He's waiting for the marines to go after the queen. Oh, doesn't get a transfuse down in time. I'm a little surprised he didn't engage with his Zerglings, but he doesn't want to give anything away. He builds four more drones and a gas. Carapace is on the way, as well as that bailing, spe bailing speed. But he actually can't make Zerglings right now. He should be making like eight Overlords, or maybe six Overlords, and then nothing but Zerglings when the spawning pool's finished. But the push is already arriving. Oh, man. I think Rainer maybe should have engaged with those Lings. Uh-oh, he's not building Overlords. Guys, he's not building Overlords. His spawning pool's going to finish. He's only got 10 free supply. He now builds four Overlords. He's got over a 1,000 minerals. His lava is also stagnating. He's lost his fourth hatchery. He has no macro hatch, no, no, only three hatcheries. He doesn't have enough production to spend his money. And he's slightly supply blocked. But a great Ling run by comes in from behind, intercepts the reinforcements, and forces Maru to clump up at home a little more before reinforcing. But Maru's got his economy and production down. Rainer needs to take a few new hatcheries. He's getting one in the top. Tanks are going to take a deadly position on that low ground. The Queens should be able to stall him out for a while. Keep in mind, though... Oh, Maru forgot his plus one attack, did he? Or did he already have it? Interesting. We'll find out in a moment. Evo Chamber is going to go down. Is it, though? It's kind of a bait. I mean, he didn't actually have an upgrade going on it, so I don't think Rainer cares too much. He's only playing Carapace here. 
trying to play very conservative. I'd like to see Raynor continue to reinforce his army on the other, in the middle of the map, and if he can cut off this army, that's where his biggest, uh, Maru's biggest weakness lies. But Raynor has not reinforced that for a while. I don't know if he's seen it move out. Oh, he's reinforcing out there. He's moving out to it. If he can get a surround of that, that'll be great. He's just got to make sure he has a good enough micro on his queens in the main to keep transfusing, because those marines in the main are fighting his queens! But... The Marines are very damaged, and he's staying out of tank range very well. Really well done by uh, Rainer. Oh, great move, but the Ling's a little slow to get on the tank on the right side. Nice hot pickup there by Maru, but two tanks go down. A few Marines as well. The other's being forced to pick up. That's what Rainer needs to do. Notice he's floating 1,100 minerals, guys. He still hasn't built a macro hatchery. The moment his fourth hatchery died, he should have dropped a macro hatchery. He's building it now at his third base. Oh, big stim and focus fire from Maru. No, Baneling's backing him up. Uh oh, Rainer's queen line is full. He's killing quite a few Marines, but he's losing a lot of Queens. He's only got five left in his main base. He's trying to build more right now. That's a good way of spending his money as well, since his lava's short. Loses an Overseer. Those Queens trying to push back. He's got to pull back with these guys. Fourth base in the top left, getting double dropped right now. The Ling Bane does clean that up, forces that drop, or a single Marine drop, actually, to pull back. Maru coming forward down the right. He's reinforcing this army again. Uh-oh. Rainer has stopped cutting off the reinforce. He got distracted in the top left, and now Maru is rallying across the map. You cannot let a Terran rally to the front like this, or they will overwhelm you. Rainer coming down, he finally realizes, intercepts this next wave of the rally, but in the main base, he's in shrubs right now. A single Marine is still dropping behind his fourth, keeping him distracted. Sporkroller and Queen's trying to hold on. That main base is getting overrun. He does end up cleaning up. This tank does Rainer, but Maru's aggression is relentless, not giving him a chance to get going. Rainer under the gun? Maru playing a fantastic game of StarCraft, man. Three base push into sharp two base push. He is not playing macro games. We keep saying Maru's going to play beat him in late game. He always beats Rainer in late game. But lately, it's been the early game that he's excelling in. If he can eliminate Rainer, stay in for the next round. They have to send out Serral to face Maru. And that is going to be a big problem. Link Bane comes in. He loses a tank, saves the Marines. Dishes out big tank shots, and that's great. The Bane Link Bomb misses. He does not detonate it. He doesn't notice those Marines. Rain is under too much pressure. The Link Bane keeps trying to surround this rally. Maru's going to try and micro his little heart out. Medivacs are there to help support as well, and will trade with that Ling Bane decently well enough. Uh, at the same time, looks like those Marines are getting intercepted, and ooh, Rainer with a nice burrowed Bane Ling move. Rainer's hanging on by the skin of his teeth right now. His fourth base is up and mining in the top left. Looks like, did he get rid of these tanks here? Three tanks have gone down. I still think there's tanks here. Yeah, there's two tanks, and oh my god, they're so close to his natural now. Those tanks, he cannot, he cannot let them survive there. Takes out one more siege tank. The marines getting swarmed by the zerglings. Rainer, has he held on? There's a bigger army coming in behind this. He doesn't have any banelings right now. Two banelings only on the map. Five queens there pulling back towards the natural. New tanks take up the position right there. And Rainer is under the gun. Maru doing a very, very good style. And look at that. The baneling nest is going to fall. That spawning pool snipe. I feel was integral. It allowed Maru to get such momentum, get Rainer on the back foot, and really put him in the driver's seat. Oh, two medevacs deep in the red, pick up Marines. Maru apparently likes gambling. What a mad dog. Those two medevacs, yet again being used to pick up Marines, yet they're not getting punished for it. Queen's not the most mobile anti air. Banelings roll into the Marines quite effectively. A Liberator gets taken out by the Queens. There's. Oh, I didn't even see that! The hype that gets built when you're watching a pixelated feed to cast the game. You don't even see the Banelings burrow. Nice burrowed Baneling. Ling surround comes in as well. He's going to take out the Liberator of the Queens. If he can get rid of this tank, maybe, just maybe, Rainer could do it. Rainer fighting so hard. Tries to burrow again, but the Marines do scan and take him out. Only two Queens left that tank. Once again, sets up in the position. Assumes the position, he says... Get ready to receive it, Rainer. Get ready. Maru will not give up this position. The natural is under assault. The Lings do take out that siege tank once more. Rainer fighting his heart out right now. Can he do it, though? That ball of Marines, each with their own personal medevacs, are a problem. The tank gets saved on the right by the medevacs. What a scrappy, down and dirty situation. But the bailing nest did not get replaced. Rainer has a lot of gas, but no minerals to spend it. He's forced to pull the drones. He cannot make banelings. It's all just lings and queens. And those Matavaks doing amazing work for Maru. Getting a lot of lings and drones killed. Is forced to pick up. 
Mamaru's still up about 18 to 20 army supply. He's looking very powerful. He's got so many medevacs and marines. And Reyna, without Banelings, needs raw numbers to overtake this. Does he have enough lings with the surround? That's the last queen here shooting up. Not a lot of anti-air. And Reyna... I don't know how he's still alive in this game. Uh, Maru lifted his main down to his third, so he's still got two base income, even though his main's all mined out. Maru is keeping it going. He is such a dirty, dirty boy, man. I love this push from Maru. It was a quick sneaky banshee across the map, even though it got scouted. He did great with the follow-up double drop, and from there, it was just relentless marine tanks and abusive positionings. The base, he burrows to hide the drones, but... Once he scans, that's going to go down. Not to mention, losing the hatchery itself is a problem. It goes down. He picks up and gets out. Maru on fire right now. And he is doing so well for onside. To take out one of the two big dogs of Basilisk would be massive. It would be absolutely massive here. A couple burrowed banelings do go in position. Rainer may have a bit of map control right now. But remember, he's only on 1-1. One, one. He starts his plus two carapace. To be fair, Maru hasn't started 2-2 two, two either. Maru's going second engineering bay and armory, but he doesn't even have a third command center. So I gotta say I'm a little surprised. Oh, Burrowed Beanlings! Ah, oh, not quite on the right position. Maru came in on a bit of a weird angle. And Reina doesn't get the opportunity there. Almost gets the medevac as well with the queens, but not quite. Maru says, okay, I mean, you have very little economy. I'm gonna be out producing you. It's all good. And he's happy to just upgrade, go for 2-2. Two, two, and uh, Sporkrill is going to go for the Liberator as well. Nice, Liberator harass. Maru's being very annoying. Building up for the next push. I'm worried, though, for him that Burrowed Banelings are everywhere. And one, just one or two good pairs of Burrowed Banelings. And, and Reyner's suddenly back in the game. Oh, Liberator being such a nuisance. Two Liberators now. Reyner's not really losing much other than mining time to it, though. So he is being efficient. Oh, focuses the Banelings down. The redrop into the Baneling. Focus fire. Maru fixes bayonets and charges into the Zerglings and says, yeah, boy, let's go. Oh, plus two melee is going to go down. Does get denied there. Sporkrilla moves over, but his Liberators are tooling Reyna right now. Reyna just has so little mobile anti-air. He's struggling with it. The big army comes forward. The big army comes forward. Watch for it. Burrowed Baneling to the right. To the right. Did it go off? It just went off. It was a massive burrowed baneling. Just killed about 15 marines. That was a big burrowed baneling. I'm surprised the observer didn't show it. I got thought they were so aware of catching that just before the marines walked over it. They moved the camera away, unfortunately. But it is what it is. Ling backstab coming in. Unfortunately, Maru, uh, oh, for Rainer, he doesn't realize. Uh, I mean, he doesn't have another base. He, he can't run elsewhere. But that tank position, you can't fight there. His drones are all trapped up there now. Yes, he gets nine SCVs, pushes Maru back to just one base mining. But he, if he had a base already building in the south, I think this would be fine for Reyna. But he's just started it now, only after getting cornered in this position, and that's an issue. Oh, man, this positioning on the tanks has been very nice so far. Notice how he tucks them in the corners so that the Zerglings can't get a neat, neat wraparound. Oh, Ling's running into the Marines. Queen's getting pushed back here. The macro hatch has been found. Uh oh, that tank is deep. Banelings, uh, you know, might have to give up that base as well. Massling backstab, Raynor. He knows that he's got to try and out position him. The tank pulls up to the high ground. Baneling hits the mineral line there. There's no wall off. If those lings go up on the, on the high ground, they can kill that siege tank. There is no wall off on the high ground. The door was open. Maru's marine army trying to go home. The Baneling's going to try and catch him, not looking on the front. But Maru does notice in time. Very well done by Maru. Good multitasking for him. He's just lost his entire economy at home. 26 SCVs went down. Raynor finding massive massive damage but how does he ever get these drones the drones are trapped on the other side of this army he needs to get them to the south to that new base that he's got finishing and then maybe with burrow he can pull off some magic a few zerglings there do get scanned maru's gonna reland his third and get back to mining with seven scvs right now what a banger of a game rainer hanging on just barely but maru still has an army that cannot be dealt with and oh rainer mr burrowed baneling they could have changed this game a big pack of marines ran over the top there he does unburrow lings in the natural killing the last couple of scvs of maru but maru says i don't need scvs i have a big boy army of 2-2 marine tank liberator and if you lose this base you're dead mate the marines go for the spread they know that banelings cannot spread their acid beyond a certain distance you spread the marines out they're only going to do a maximum amount of damage available and rainer unfortunately for him gets taken out 2-0 but maru brought out some banger builds some heavy aggression and that spawning pool snipe was absolutely deadly all right guys going into the match uh remember 
There is a revive available. But if Serral loses this match, uh, he is going to have to get revived right away, right? Um, Maru on onside gaming side still has Sola waiting in the wings. So let's get on into it. I thought the game would have already started, but cool intro graphics. Thank you, World Team League, for hosting such an awesome tournament. As you can see at the very top of the screen, two lives less left for this team. Serral in the top right side, repping Basilisk. Uh, hopefully he's had a good rest after all killing Abydos. And in the bottom left side, a very good performance there versus Rainer. He had to work for it in that last game. But uh, Maru in the bottom left. Uh, another map that's quite tough to, to go into Ancient Cistern. I wonder, does he pick Neo Humanity versus Serral if we get uh, if, if, if he loses map one? Because apparently it's loser's pick. Or would he pick like a Dragon Scales... I wonder what maps the Terrans are picking these days. Because I used to think it was always Babylon, but I'm not really sure. Serral's talking to himself. Did you guys see that? Serral was talking to himself on the camera. I know it's a little pixelated. It's interesting. Rare to see Serral. He looks frustrated. Why does he look frustrated? What's going on? He's going gas pool, which is very good getting an early link speed to counter this 2-Rex. Maybe he's just kind of smacking his lips. It's interesting. It does feel to me like Serral's kind of like talking as he's playing right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. He must be kind of like, okay, I got to remember to do this. Sometimes players do that where they talk like, okay, let's let's make sure I check for this. If he does this build, I'm going to do that. So maybe he's just trying to get in, in, in his focused face. Now, obviously, a lot of pressure on Serral because if he beats Maru, all that does is equalize and then he, it's going to be him versus Sola no matter what. And uh, that's kind of a fun match we can potentially look forward to. If Serral can take out Maru, obviously if he doesn't, they're kind of screwed because they've got just a revive of Serral or Rainer. Very unlikely to revive Trigger. But yeah, if he ends up playing Sola Sola, 3 0 Serral with some cheese. Um, at uh, and, and like a, the third game, maybe not really a cheese, but just like a very tight rush, a very kind of good Roach Bane push that, that Sola took out Serral with at Game as 8. So I'm sure Serral would love a chance for revenge. And if he beats Maru, he definitely will have that opportunity. For now, though, Maru is going to go for the three Reaper opening. He's got the command center up behind it. No third barracks or anything like that. And he goes for a second gas into third command center. Queen already getting bounced around. Going to have to leave that third Reaper at home, I would imagine. Otherwise, those Lings will be able to potentially take out the Deeper. Are these Lings specifically just hiding to snipe the Tech Lab and Reactor when they start building? So Cure doesn't build those add-ons. He always goes third command center factory, and Maru's doing it the Cure style, which means there's no exposed add-ons for a while. But the Lings are now coming home. Ah, I guess because they're going for the third base. Serral's like, hey, I made Ling speed. You know I've got Ling speed. Dude, get out of here. If he gets the hatchery cancel, that's huge. Serral may have slightly misjudged just how good Ling speed is here. He's got to save that hatchery. On the other hand, if Maru just loses his Reapers, he's, he's in big trubs. Okay, Ling's coming forward. These are not Beyond's Reapers. But they get out of there, which is the important thing. Okay, good pullback by Maru. He's just going to have to respect it. And Serral's been forced into super early Ling speed. A lot of Zerglings. It's not the greatest position to be in by any means. And a Starport already going down behind this. Not many Marines building. But as the reactor finishes, they do start up. Going to focus the tech lab and the reactor. The reactor is actually the higher value target. But because the tech lab was already so exposed and so damaged, he decided to focus it down. It does delay any potential stim coming in. Very nicely done by Serral. Two overlords on the way, fam. Droning up. He's got his third base finished. Queen's coming out. And you can see that creep spread's going to start to work its way out onto the map, giving some map control. I'm just so happy we get Serral versus Maru, guys. We don't see this match very often. I always want Maru to play mech. He's playing Cure's build. Yeah, this is 100% just the way Cure played in the Grand Finals versus, uh, versus Rainer over at G8. Hellion lib harassment and uh, often just, just straight up bio play from there. Now, if he does the full Cure way, Cure doesn't go past 66 SCVs. In the first few games, at least, versus Rainer, it was like... I'm just going to try and kill you on three base, never give up momentum. And it's kind of funny because after a period of Terran sitting back a bit more and being happy to go to four base, five base, six base, we have seen a lot more Terran trying to just dictate the pace on three base and taking a delayed fourth command center and not really building workers, just transferring workers to it, delaying their second factory and really just 
saying, I'm always going to have enough army to force annoying situations for the Zerg. First medevac starting up for Maru. He does need to realize he didn't have the money to start the second one. He starts a tech lab there. He's got to start the second medevac. I'm pretty sure he thinks he's starting two medevacs. That's a problem. There we go. Maru does realize starts it. It's only about 10 seconds late. So that, that's very bad. If your medevac pops out, you go to load it up and you go, where's my second medevac? But these pros are so good at constantly bouncing their screens around and checking they've done everything the way they intended. Look at that reaction from Serral. He gets clipped on the queen by a liberator shot, but the liberator's already almost dead. Loses a tiny bit of mining time. Straight back to mining. Serral is up 20 workers right now. Ooh, you got to get something done here. Now, usually the way this gets powerful is the double medevac marine pressure hits one side, Hellions hit somewhere else, and the Liberator goes back in. But the Liberator is already almost dead, so it's nowhere near as much of a threat as it was in Qaverse Reina. And uh, the second medevac is very late as well, so it's a little bit behind, which means these marines, if they get surrounded, they won't be able to pick up. All right. Hatcher on the right side, let's go. Double Evo Chambers on the way, Bailing Speed as well. We've got Queen, six Bailings. Liberator's coming in. Okay, he's going to Siege on that third. Hellion, Lib push on the bottom. Uh, Hellion, uh, Marine push, sorry, on the bottom. Liberator starts to get some drones. Ooh, Serral's in trouble. He takes a bit of damage there. The Liberator re-sieges, moves around. Three drones getting control of this position. Really nice plays by Maru. He doesn't overcommit. And it's all buying time for him to catch back up on the economy. Queen is left sitting there by Serral. Not sure if on purpose or not, but it does clean that Liberator up. And another Overlord goes down. There is a drone sitting out over on that potential base on the right. Maru lets it survive for now. Maru has an economy advantage, and he is slowly adding those extra barracks. I think he may have missed his fifth barracks from starting. I could be wrong on that, but uh, I'm not sure if he's got all five barracks. He should have them at seven minutes. But uh, two more barracks just started up, so is he going straight to eight barracks, or is he only now rounding out his five barracks? We'll find out in a moment. When you're producing off two barracks for so long, it does slow down those extra barracks from coming in. It's more continual early production, but then it slows down that big five racks production explosion. Second factory is on the way for Maru as well. We're getting a little bit more of those uh, support units for the Marines. And we've got five hatcheries and a macro hatch. That's six hatcheries in total for Serral. Five base, six hatch. Creep Tomb is active on every single front line. And the Changeling comes in. Sees that he's sitting at home with tanks. Sees a second factory. Sees a fourth command center. Serral just got a full scout of everything Maru's doing. And that's going to make him feel comfortable building another 10 drones in the next 30 seconds. 76 workers. You can stay at that count all game if you want to. But uh, I'm pretty sure seeing a fourth command center and the like, Serral's going to want to tech up. And indeed, infestation pit goes down. A few more drones starting for him. And Maru being annoying with this drop. Trying to work this angle. Gets three banelings. Saves eight of the marines. Drops the triangle again, yep. Call this a triangle because you can drop this base, the base to the top left, and the main base, all within very close distance, whereas it's massive, massive ground traveling distance between those. Rainer would be at 90 workers right now with what Serral scouted. You can see how Serral's a bit more of a controlled player, a bit more of a, I want to keep my army higher, I want to be a little bit safer, I don't want to risk going to 90 drones too early and then dying to something silly. He's kind of like, okay, build a few lings, build a couple drones. Build a few lings and banes, build, build one or two drones here and there. And at 78 workers, he seems content for now. Hive does start up at 8 minutes 40, going to 8 racks and the 4th command center finishing, as well as swapping into Widowmine play as Maru. It's a good way to play for Maru. I don't think this is too bad for him. But uh, he's definitely... I'm going to be curious to see, does he go straight like 5th command center, 6th command center, ghosts... Or is he going to try and start split pushing both sides of the map with the bio mine? Either of those could work out. And double drop in the back. Two sides at once. Very annoying play. But I think Serral's okay. Three pronged harassment right now. Serral needs to split his army up a little better. You can see his whole army's kind of running back and forth just a bit more than he probably should be. Oh, getting a hatchery cancel. Nicely done. Maru's attacking with just small sets of units in three or four places. He's forcing mistakes out of Serral. But on the other hand, he also is exposing his army deep on creep. And that could bite him in the butt. Good job getting another scan there. Nicely done. Hellbat's going to get some good shots off. Does save two Hellbat's eight marines. A few of the units get surrounded. Serral's up 20 supply right now. He's up in army supply as well. Something you very rarely see in Rainer's games. 
But like I said, Serral plays on a lower work account than guys like Rainer. 81 drones, he's content with that. He's happy to sit on that economy, have more army to make sure he takes the fights correctly. But I definitely want to start seeing some spore crawlers. With the way Maru's dropping, he's going to need him. Oh, good overwhelm for Serral. Does take a decent Widow Mine hit to the face. But he does clean it up. Where are those Overseers as well? He's really struggling with these drops. The lack of Spores and the Queens not being in position is actually really hurting Serral. I feel like this is where you can get thrown off and start to make mistakes. He's not taking big damage, but he's like it, just in such a stressful position where you know he might lose focus a little bit. Bailing's detonated to take out the Widowmine. More Widowmines there. He's done a very good job of detonating. Oh, big Widowmine hit finally lands for Maru. But at the same time, double drop in the north is defended by the Queens and Lings. Maru's been very good at his multitasking. He's got Drilling Claws and a fifth command center on the way. Vipers, 3-3 three, three and Adrenal Glands are on the way for Serral. Serral still has not gotten rid of those drops. And at this point, it's got to be pit. It's got to be peeving him off, man. He's got to be annoyed. It's just Maru's uh, able to pull his attention this way and that. And meanwhile, you're attacking into Widow Mines over and over again, and you don't have the APM because you're so distracted up there to stop it. A Viper gets focused down by the Marines. Yes, that double drop finally gets cleaned up. Serral does also break through the position on the south. Looks like he's okay. He survived a very scary moment in the game. His creep's being pushed back a little bit. It's going to be a while before he can respread it. There's still a few stray Widow Mines peppered on the map as well. Maru's now going Marine Marauder and Widow Mine. He's adding concussive shells. Good on him for remembering those upgrades. And I feel like with his fifth command center going down, Maru's got a decent income, but he does not have the Iron Bank. There's no three or four more command centers. There's none of this stuff going on. It really is an issue. Ooh. Here we go. Widow Mine drop coming in. Widow Mine drop coming in on that right side. Big bio army distracts on the left. Looks like it got five workers. Not bad. Oh. Good spready on the Zerglings. Nice surround by Serral on those front-running Marauders. Marauders get wrecked by Zerglings, but they allow the Zerglings to clump up, which is where the Widow Mines can get good shots. Serral, though, is a master of peeling off the targeted Zerglings or simply spreading his Zerglings out and dragging those Widow Mine shots away from the center of his big Zergling mass. Oh, okay. Command center in the bottom. Has to get scanned to get through the Barred Zergling. Nice move by Serral. He's trying to add a Hydroden right now to get some extra anti-air and ranged firepower 88 workers for him 87 versus maru oh great ling backstab though i i love this serral's such a front on player but he mixes those 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 counter attacks those backstabs those little run buys in just at the right time you know he gets you so focused on the front because he's so hard to beat there and then a little te technical ling run by just does massive damage on the right side six drones go down four scvs have fallen uh, in the Ling run by as well. More importantly, the command center is not able to morph into the planetary. So every time those Lings come in, he's delaying Maru from getting his base going. And this pulls the attention away. It pulls the momentum off. What is Serral doing? He's spreading creep across the entire map right now. He's getting his upgrades. He's transferring drones. He's taking this little moment to breathe and get better set up for the next step. Great Widow Mine shot there for Maru. But you can see every time you pull Maru back like that, Maru loses the ability to force those really good Widow Mine pushes on the front. And that's what's really nice. A few more links come in yet again. Going after that worker line. Really nice plays by Serral. I don't think he's necessarily in the most amazing god tier position, but I think the thing that's going for him is Maru doesn't have the mass command center. He's just started the Ghost Academy. He's just started the sixth command center. And it feels to me like Maru is never going to actually be building mass command center. The Iron Bank seems to be something Maru has almost forgotten about in a lot of his recent games. He just doesn't go for it. He wants to be pushing and being aggressive. But if you get lurkers out, they counter this entire army. And even having a few ghosts is not going to be worth it if you've only got three orbitals for detection. That is not enough. Serral, a little bit gas-starved right now, is taking two more gases while he starts his range upgrades. Ling Bane Hydra rolling in on that left side. Love to see the units lost tab more often in this game. On the right, Maru doing a big push. The Queens try to hold the front line. Looks like Parasitic Bombs, Ling Bane, Hydra do finally respond and get on top. Well played there by Serral. The Widowmine does a burrow, unburrow. And we'll take out a Hydra list before going down. But the Hydra shoot down all the Metavacs. Really good engagement there by Serral, who's maintaining an army supply advantage. Not something you see too often in this matchup. But it's allowing him to push Maru back from these positions pretty regularly. He's so quick to remax. Lurkaden's almost finished as well. Two more command centers are building. Maru's thinking about the Iron Bank now. He's kind of limping towards it. So he's not got the explosive, I got 10 command centers, I'm unstoppable in the late game. But he's doing good. 
He's doing very, very, very good. Ooh, okay, we've got seismic spines on the way. That's the range upgrade. Ghosts and liberators being mixed in as well as cloak. Ling Bane coming in. Uh oh, is Serral actually going to commit? Okay, I think Serral wants to deny a base right now. He's got bank. He's max. That's a lot of widow mines, but there's not many marines. Where's the rest of Mara's army? Mara's supply is quite low right now. There's not a lot of firepower, which means most of those widow mines are just shooting on a few zerglings. A big baneling clump does get shot down, but it feels like he's just a bit low on units. The planetary just barely survives. Nice EMP on the vipers behind that as well. But notice how many medevacs Maru's actually been losing in these fights as well. The hydras have been focus firing them. The parasitic bombs have been landing on them. I wish so much we could see the units lost up because it would tell us so much about this. But I actually think several has only been a few thousand resources less efficient than Maru in this game. And I think it's because he played on a lower work account earlier and always had enough army to kind of swarm and overwhelm. He was never massively outnumbered by Maru in one of these fights. Now, obviously, you're never ahead in the unit efficiency in this sort of matchup, but I think he's surprisingly close, is my feeling. I still worry for Maru when Lurkers hit the field because he's only now getting, I think, a fourth orbital command center. I don't think he has a fifth or a sixth one just yet. And that means his scan count will be very low. He won't have the ability to drop many mules either. Liberator does siege on that top base. Lingbane Lurker running in right now. Serral's going to take out the Commander and run away. Oh, the Widow Mines cleanse his Banelings. But he does get rid of that fifth base, or sixth base, I should say, for Maru. Maru's denying base in the top left right now, though. He gets a few drones. Oh, Maru stumbles into the Lurkers. He does get a snipe on one of those, but the Ghosts are already out of energy. SCV's exposed on that low ground. Ling Bane taking out 17 SCVs along with the Command Center Snipe. Nice pullback. How was Maru watching right then? I thought he'd already looked away, but he does save the 8 Marine drop in the top. Lurker Harass in the bottom, going to force more scans. And remember, he doesn't have that many of them. This used to be the win condition that Serral and Rainer used to take down Clem a lot, was you're defending, you're defending, and then you hit Lurkers and you start multi-prong harassing everywhere, and he doesn't have enough scans to reveal everything. Definitely, Structures tab is something else I'd look at as well as the Units Lost tab if I had control of the Observing. 181 supply from Maru. He's been struggling to stay maxed out, but he's always got a pretty damn good army and a good mix of units. Of course, if you guys are watching for the first time on WTL, Chinese Client does censor certain words for at least superstitious reasons. Uh, Marine Marauder Ghost spreading backwards. The Lurkers coming forwards. Oh, Snipey Snipe gets one of them. The other one gets hit. Widowmine does friendly fire a little bit. Biddling Bane coming forward. These parasitic bombs, man. They keep doing so much to just pepper these medevacs down. What you don't realize, because we're not watching it, is those vipers, every time they throw parasitic bombs, they go and grab energy by consuming off a building. They come back, they do it again. And there's no downtime. A lot of players accidentally F2 or bring them back to the fight before they've consumed energy. Serral is so methodical about only using them at the right times. He has, in the midst of all this fighting, this rhythm game down where he's queuing the Vipers to consume energy, bring them back to the front. When he sees they're back on the front line, throws the parasitic bombs, cues them back. He's so organized on that, and that has given him insane value. So many Terrans are used to those Medivacs being mostly untouched in these fights, but he's actually finding great, great engagements. Ling Bane's going to deny the top left. Oh, all the fighting is in the bottom right for a while. Serral says, guess what? His whole army should be down there. This will be the perfect time to strike the top left. He does it. Even Burrows is zergling to force a scan out. Plus three range on the way for Serral. The main base of Maru is being lifted over to that base on the left. Ghosts back on the front line. Widow Mines are getting cleaned up by these lurkers. And one of them does get sniped down. And Infester is on the way. I love that. I think a couple of Infestors spread across this map is how you close this one out. We are going to be seeing a nice late game brawl. The problem is Zerg does not need, not need a lot of infrastructure for late game. Terran does. Maru is not really... He's in late game. He's not in end game. These are two very different things. He has at most five orbital command centers. He does not have 10. He does not have extra factories. No plus three vehicle weapons. No blue flame. None of that stuff that can allow him to have the super elite late game army. Here we go. Link Bane Lurkers get it capitalized by jumping on top. Some of the Banelings hit the mineral line, but they don't pair up with a second Baneling, so the SCVs will get healed by the Medivac. Good hold by Maru. Really nice pullback by him. Good scramble to stay on his feet. Lurker Harass comes in again. He's going to try and siege that, or borrow that, I should say, out of range. And even shift clicks the SCVs. Notice it would target the planetary on its own, 
but he shift clicked the SCVs to make sure it was targeting those ahead of the planetary. Very well done. Marine Marauder, Widowman, Ghost coming forward on the south right now. There's a Lurker on the right side. Ling's going for the left. Here we go. Serral's going to just dive on it. His army seems like it's a little spread out right now. The Ghost Marauder spread's pretty good. And yet, yeah, not Serral's best attack angle. He may have to give this base up. He's been trying to hold this area. There's a random Infestor waddling in. I don't even know if it has Fungal Energy right now. Ooh, Serral's in trouble. He has to give that base up. That last fight or two was not as good for him. But the Lurker harass is fantastic. Harassing the top left at the same time. And Maru, he's trying to play this style that Clem plays of just Biomine Ghost. It's a style uh, we've been a little critical of on this channel because we feel like having no tanks to anchor your positions, if you get caught out of position one time or a fight goes very bad, they are going to counterattack across the map and explode. So it's not that kind of tank-focused, tank-ghost, planetary, mass orbital command center style we're used to seeing. And look at that one Sharky boy burrows in. Cyril's got a cheeky infester there. And he's going to look to catch those ghosts with a fungal so the Ling Bane can connect. I think he... Oh, he gets scanned. Nice move. Very good move there. Maru realizing there might be infestors on top of him. Those Widow Mines, one of them does fire. Another Widow Mine does get detonated on before it can fire. You'll notice Serral's often just boxing the Banelings on top of the Widow Mines and just hitting the detonate. He's saying, look, I would rather sacrifice three or four Banelings to kill a Widow Mine and not let it fire rather than have some of those Widow Mines go off and kill 20 Banelings. Oh, Ling Bane Hydra's coming forward again, but Maru's whole army is here to greet it. He's up a ramp as well. I don't know about these fights up the ramp. Serral's bank is completely gone. I definitely feel like... Okay, units lost in the bottom right. Serral's lost 48,000 resources to 36,000. These last few fights are definitely going Maru's way. A 12,000 resource advantage in the units lost. And even though he doesn't have that mass orbital and Serral has been mining more than him, you can see it's stacked up in that efficiency it's not a crazy, crazy, crazy endgame amount, but it is decent. The Link Bane Hydra has to defend these bases. He gets on top of the ghost, though. He's actually getting on top of the ghost. They need to spread. They need to spread. Maru does pick up and save a lot of the ghosts, but it looks like his front line already got cleared. Holy crud. That was just so many Banelings rolling through that army. There's Lurker harass on the bottom as well, causing a lot of problems for him. And Maru's supply dips. Remember, he doesn't have all the scans and the mules. He's getting harassed to death by Lurkers, and it looks like that fight, he just... There was so much investment in the Banelings to supercharge that army. It allowed Serral, building that bank over the last few minutes, to overwhelm by just shoving through way too many Banelings to handle. He got a very efficient fight in the north of the map while Maru was distracted by the Lurkers. Takes out an orbital. It doesn't even lift. Looks like serral has got game one in the bank. That supply... I would believe in Maru coming back if he had that Iron Bank. He never built the Iron Bank this game, remember? And that's going to cost him. In the late game, you really do need an excess of orbital command centers. And uh, I I definitely love this Biomine Ghost style if you can maintain the momentum and the aggression. But Serral did such a good job of focusing down the Metavax, parasitic bombing them, engaging in multiple areas. His Ling backstabs early to stop Maru initially getting the good position. And now he's got an overbearing army. He's going to come forward. Watch out for the Widow Mine, Serral. Big Boom Booms could be going down. Decent Widow Mine to hit there. The Planetary, though, getting shoved on. 14 SCVs in a Planetary. The tanks on the high ground do push Serral back. But he's happy to just deny that base and run away, replace the Zerglings. And he's going to rinse and repeat that over and over again. Here we go. Infestor on Burrow! He fungles a few of the ghosts right next to himself. Nice move. And then he burrows to try and hide. Cheeky bugger. Oh, cheeky Harold. Harold the Infestor gets away on the bottom side, guys. Much like healthy Harold, that giraffe that always told us that weird health advice when we were in school. Uh, oh, man. I don't know. I don't know why I'm thinking of healthy Harold for that guy. Big Widow Mine on the Ling Run by. Nice defense by Maru. He's down so far in supply, though. What can you do from here as Maru? He doesn't have the infrastructure. He just can't do it. Yeah, no. Serral's yeah. too good in this scenario. Look at this. I mean, these are lovely spreads from Maru, but I think he's just going to have to grit his teeth and start thinking about how to win the next game. That is 10 Banelings for every ghost, every marine or marauder. He's absolutely overwhelmed. Um, Serral there. Takes a nice win on Ancient Cistern, but now Maru gets to pick his map pick. And remember, if he knocks out Serral in this next game, they clear each other, and then you still got two lives versus one in the advantage for onside. So Maru, if he can get this next win, it'll be big. All right, guys, going into the next game. Maru once again going for the low ground. Double barracks, a wall off. Serral in the top left has gone for a standard 16 hatchery build. Guys, don't forget to get some Rio energy drink. And over here, we have the lovely interviewer girl. And I think it was that and the, the Chinese caster. And then you can get a World Team League fan. 
Sorry guys, just reading the advertisements on the uh, the feed there. Is that a comic? Dude, they have so many fun products and different things. They, <laughs> they're advertising here on WTL, I love it. <laughs> Uh, the Chinese scene's pretty funky, man. They have they have a really cool hardcore community of people that just love StarCraft, and I love that it's still going strong there. Um, for those who didn't hear, by the way, Oliver, you might be wondering, you know, what's he been up to lately? Oliver is apparently, um, I don't know, uh, he's taking a bit of a break from StarCraft. Apparently, he's, I think he's a bit uh, disappointed in his recent performances. I'm not sure if he's just taking a time away from tournaments and he's just grinding in secret until he feels he's good enough to dominate, but... Uh, Apparently he's having a bit of a hard time right now, so definitely send out your well wishes to him on social media or whatever if you're able to. Hoping to see him back in action in the near future. It's hard to go from such an impressive height to, you know, falling out early in a few tournaments. But StarCraft scene is just insanely stacked and competitive these days. It is so, so difficult to compete with the very best. Um, these two players here are part of the reason for that, a very big part of the reason. Korean boy and a Finnish boy who absolutely destroy that. Drone was misrallied there by Sarah by the looks of it. <laughs> Took a few hits. And nice Ling Micro so far. Hasn't lost any units. Maru's gonna go deep. He looks for the drone. Good pullbacks by Sarah though. Very nice control. Queens are out. Oh, he just went double inject. Serral going quick Ling speed. Goes straight for the double inject. Okay, I was interested. I guess the creep tumor always gets delayed versus two Rex Reaper, so that does make sense. Factory before third, Command Center, uh, which usually looks like the Banshee follow-up. Doesn't have to be, though. Third Command Center is there. Oh, Overlord scouts both. Nice move by Serral. I think I saw a little bit of a movement of Maru's head, like he went, Ah, oh, man, that Overlord sees my build. Damn it. Tech Lab and Reactor are building behind this. The Reapers go for a drone. They get it. Great play. At least he gets a little bit of damage. You don't need direct damage, but it does definitely help out a lot. Oh, Reaper's going back in. Okay. Third command center is on the way. Starboard. It's actually a reactor, so it does look like it's. Wait, why is he building a reactor on the factory? Is this going to be the Widow Mine drop build, perhaps? Could be double Hellion production and the Liberator as well, right? Could be that one. But um, yeah, I think it'll probably just be that. I think that's a pretty solid way of playing with the Hellion Lib. You just got to be careful not to take too much damage with the Liberator early on. It's not a bad way of playing at all. Stim does start a little bit later in this regard. Roach Warren on the natural. Second gas coming up. Oh, it is the Widow Mine build. Very nice. Very, very nice. So chat was saying, isn't this just a simple 2 one one No, no, because th there was a pause in barracks production and then stim also and marine production didn't start as soon as the add-ons were finished. So it was a very quick factory and starport. Um, and it's, yeah, you need to already have stim started when you go for those things if you're going for the 2 one one Reaper gets surrounded. Nice little ambush there by Serral. Serral is playing Roaches. I think he's so good at Roach play. He's very good at swapping between styles. Serral's flexibility as a player these days is pretty much unmatched. And that's something I never thought I'd say. I mean, <laughs> I guess like a Dark or someone is a bit crazier than him, but Serral's builds actually make sense. Whereas Dark just does random things, I think, uh, and then and then finds ways to win. It feels like Serral's builds are perfectly planned. Four Widowmine drop going across. Those units trying to distract the Marines and the Reapers. We'll get one more Creep Tumor. So far, it does look like this is going to be a double engine. Yeah, double engineering bay goes by. I was going to say, it looks like a macro follow up, but uh, double E bay and the extra barracks will be quite delayed. So he's going to build two medevacs behind. Widow mine drop boosting in. Here we go. Let's see what he gets. There is already a spore crawler, which helps out with the detection. See if he does some spore crawler tricks. And it looks like a bunch of lava go down. That's something. Single, single drone or zergling and a bunch of lava. He's attacking his own lair, though, which is not great. I like the Widow Mine spread, just keeping Serral occupied. That Widow Mine does go down, though, before it can unburrow and then reburrow. And a few Zerglings go down there as well. Luckily, he did stop attacking his lair. Double drops behind it. Very close behind it. Uh-oh. We've seen players die to this. Serral, you're on 65 workers. There's a double drop coming across the map. You need units in that main base, and you need them right now. How many queens does he have? I think they're out front in his base. I don't think they're in the back. Uh-oh. 
Uh-oh, if he does not see that double drop, Serral's screwed. We're not watching it right now. It's unloading in the main. <laughs> His Overlord does see it. Okay, his Overlord does see it. We've got units ready to get to the main base. Lots of roaches coming. Lots of roaches coming. The medevac should get shot down by the queens. The drones are already hiding. Good preparation here by Serral, but his roaches get bounced by the Reaper grenade, and they are getting outgunned, but they are taking a lot of the marines with them, lowering the damage output, and new roaches and queens come in. Whoo! Serral gets through a very scary part in the game there. I've seen that double drop do surprising amounts of damage way too much recently. Well, that's the same double drop that basically killed Reyna's third base in game one against Curic G8 on this tournament and caused a lot of issues in the rest of that game where he was always behind. But I think Cyril's held on okay. He's on 70 workers. He's got that fourth hatchery in the middle, which I've never actually thought about. But that's actually a great hatchery to take with Roach Ravager because you're going to be controlling the map. And he's going Hydroden. Wait, what? Oh, okay, his infestation pit's already finished, so he's going Hive as well. I thought it was Hive bef uh, Hydroden before infestation pit, which is a bizarre style, wouldn't really make any sense. But he's, of course, wanting to unlock the Lurker Den. He wants to go quick Lurkers. I don't think he's going to have the gas for Vipers. Notice he's already taking eight gas. That's a big tell. So if Maru's paying attention, he really should go straight for a second factory. But he's rushing eight barracks. And... I think he needs, he definitely is going to need a double factory tank. And if you position well, your marines can kind of shield those tanks from abducts and uh, blinding clouds a little bit. Ideally, he'll go probably get tech labs to try and get more marauders. They do very well versus roaches and lurkers. But uh, if he does just go mass marine tank against roach lurker with such a quick hive, that's going to be tough for Maru. So... Looking at that production tab, Maru's barracks just finished building, 678. And he's building marines, he's not building add-ons, he's going for a three base all in. He's trying to just push through Serral before he gets to Lurkers. He tries to run forward and get a Ravager, four marines for nothing, beautiful pullback by Serral. Drop on the picture in picture down there in the right side, does take away three, uh, marine, three, three drones. That's not too bad though. Serral's building Hydras, he's going to go straight for Lurker speed. And not just that, he's making Overlord speed, he's going to drop creep. Armory is very late. 1-1 one, one finished a while ago, but he can't start 2-2. Two, two. Maru is in a rather desperate position of his own volition, of his own choosing. He's saying, I'm going to kill you before you get lurkers. He scans and sees lurkers. What do you even do as Maru? He's forced to push. He's going to push. He's not really ready to push, but he's going to just try and shove right now. Bile takes out the front tank. Great defense so far by Serral, but he's got to buy a bit more time for those lurkers. Marines on the left kind of come in a bit derpily there. Okay, here we go. Lurkers getting in position. They don't have range yet, so they're only eight range lurkers. They will be pushed back eventually. Serral should take a hatchery elsewhere in case he needs to give this one up. He doesn't have any vipers either to deal with those tanks. So remember, as the scans come in, those guys need to get transfused. Ooh, no transfuse on the first one. Does transfuse the second lurker. Maru tries to stim into the Roach Hydra lurker. Mad Dog Maru tries to run in, but uh, does not find the mark. The lurkers are still standing, as are the Ravages. And he runs forward. One more siege tank goes down to the Corrosive Bile. Serral's range is kicked in. Those are now 10 range lurkers. They are much stronger than they were 30 seconds ago. The transfuse, keeping these lurkers alive through those tank shots as well. Maru does not have a follow-up. He's going to pick up and doom drop the main because he's in the doo-doo right now. He is desperate. He thinks twice about it. He's kind of second-guessing himself. He's got to be real careful. Are there seven dropper lords making right now, guys? Is that what I see in the production tab? Is Serral making a mass drop? He wants to do a mass drop into Maru's main to counterattack. He says, you doom drop me? I'll doom drop you, idiot. <laughs> oh my god, Serral. Serral sneaking it around the scan as well. This is so cool. I love this. I mean, Maru's, Maru's in a very desperate spot, but going for a mass lurker drop in the main is such a cute way of trying to take your opponent out. Remember, if Serral takes out Maru 2-0, then he's still alive in this. Then he can face Sola in the uh, the final pre-revival match. This is going to be fantastic here if he can surprise him. But the Liberator tank doing pretty well. The Lurkers got to be careful. They're trying to run back up that ramp. Nice transfusers so far. The Lurkers do burrow. They've got Adaptive Talons, which gives them that extra buff as well. Two Lurkers will burrow in the main. It's just going to end up being a harassment. Maru's aggression is very strong. And remember, those Vipers are pretty late. There's still no fifth base for Serral as well. He's been kind of not that high on workers. Uh oh he runs forward to drop some Biles, but why are we looking at the starport right now? There's a fight going on. Oh my god, the Ravages. The Lurkers are getting pushed back. A bunch of Lurkers and Ravages just died. Serral kind of fumbled that last engage, I think. Wisely gives up the base, takes a new expansion as his fourth. He's got a big Ling run by down the left. Remember, they don't have melee upgrades, so they're not that good. He also doesn't have 
plus two range, all plus, and plus two carapace has just started. Lurkers have gone in though, picture in picture, you're gonna see Lurkers on the high ground, and main base and third base both. Maru does evacuate the main, but he doesn't notice the third for a little bit, he loses seven SCVs, the Lurker. Oh, he borrow, unburrows it, pulls it away. Roach Ravager Ling run by a coming in for Serral. Serral is wreaking havoc. Very nice little cute engagements, but because the army got pulled back by the Lurkers, these guys won't be that effective. Clean up a few Marauders and then get out of there would be the best play. Hatchery in the top right, gonna get killed. No, cancel at the last second, coming in for Serral. Really, really well done. Extra Evo Chamber is building right now for Serral. Not sure if he lost one. Oh, that's not a big enough army. Serral, what are we doing? Oh god, oh god, Serral looks a little bit shook on his camera there. You could tell he's like, wait, why is that army so small? He clearly mismanaged his units a little bit. Finally, that Lurker goes down. He's got Lurkers on the left defending. I think it might be Doom Drop time for Maru again. A few Marines running. They get cleaned up by the Roach Hydra. He's going to go for it. Doom Drop in the main. But wait, there's Vipers and Lurkers nearby. Parasitic Bomb could ruin this. Oh, he drops into the Lurkers not knowing they're there. The Hydras and the Queens are going to clear up. He redrops on the low ground. Lurkers on the high ground. Lurkers on the low ground. And Spines right up into your nether regions. Parasitic Bomb as well takes out two of these Matamax. Maru has to tap. Serral with an excellent strategy there, very well played, and he 2 zeros Maru, gets revenge for Reyna, and he's going to force it to that Serral versus Solar revenge opportunity. Alright guys, guess what? It's down here to the last uh, pre-revival life, so two lives left on both sides, and... Um, for anyone who tuned in late, uh, basically the second match between Maru and Serral there was basically Maru had already lost his life. He was just fighting to try and kill Serral's life. Didn't get it. So Serral took Maru's life and then preserved his own with the second victory. That's kind of how it works. So two lives left aside and uh, one of those including the potential revive opportunity. Now remember Solar 3-0 cheesed the heck out of Serral last time he played. Is Serral going to play safe? Is he going to play careful? Is he going to play afraid? The answer is no. He's just doing a normal 16 hatchery build order. This looks completely stock standard for him. And uh, I wonder, you know, what he's going to do to get revenge. Is it anything special or is it, I will just play better? Because I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Looks like a nice trophy case in the background of Solar's camera, by the way. I can see a couple of tr big trophies up there. No doubt a few DreamHack trophies. Uh, oh, that's what the star is. The star is a DreamHack open Stockholm, I'm sure few other ones. Got a bunch of plushies in front of them as well. Link speed starts up, identical timings, and they're not showing how many workers are left on gas. So I'm going to tell you, based off the gas income at the bottom, it does look like they've both probably pulled one worker off gas. Solar may have left Moron, but no, it looks like the same gas difference the whole time. So it looks like they're both on just two workers on gas right now. And... Third hatchery goes up there. Solar's going to take the triangle, whereas Serral goes for the straight line base. Now, remember, this was the map where Serral kind of left that map early versus Ragnarok that he was winning back in the champion world championship. And exact same spawns uh, kind of scenario. Bane the Nest goes down for both sides. Did a pretty safe timing for such a big map. For a minute, Solar was losing mining time. Wait, what happened? Solar had an idle drone? Oh, okay, chat caught this. I did not see it. Apparently, Solar's top drone, when he split his workers, he misclicked it next to the mineral patch. So one of his drones was not mining for the first minute of this game. Big mistake for Solar. That definitely costs him. Serral's opening up with 12 Zerglings. He's looking to do a Ling Bane pressure here. Maybe sneak a few Banelings on the other side of the map as well. Oh, it was following another drone, according to chat. It wasn't actually on the minerals. It was following another drone. Ah, uh, very good catch, guys. I did not see that. That's a big mistake. Serral's going to start the pressure now, moving across. Two Banelings morphing for Solar on the bottom side of the map. Going to try and defend. He's making three... Oh, five Banelings. He's making two on the other side of the map maybe as well. It's a lot of Banelings. He's going to try and waddle those into Serral's natural. If Serral's Queen's in position, he can intercept them. Nice thing, Bane Micro, so far. Serral is just droning behind this. 37 workers versus 34, but Serral... Solar's massing Lings. Solar's actually planning to do a giant counterattack. Looks like Serral does lose one of his Banelings on the front. He starts a Roach Warren. That's a very safe Roach Warren. But uh, it's not going to be ready in time to stop what's coming his way. So let's hope he has something at home other than just this Ling Bane on the front. If he didn't leave any Lings and Banes at home, he could be in trouble. Oh me, oh my. Those Banelings are going to intercept him on the way home. He's got two of his own Banes there. 
But watch out, Serral. Banelings come from the right. It looks like he does manage to escort himself home. But he loses a Baneling there. A little sloppy from Serral. Solar is down eight workers. He needs to catch up. He's starting to drone, build more overlords here. Does feel like Serral has a small lead. But actually, no, he's lost 13 Zerglings to one. Never mind. Solar's trading better, even though he's way behind on the economy. Three queens coming over. Nice evacuation on the drones. Two of them go down, but that's absolutely acceptable. That being said, Solar is droning like a mad dog right now, and he's getting a Ling Scout in, which is great. He does see not that much gas mining or anything like that. Solar being very greedy. And Serral builds seven roaches and then goes back to drones. Okay, so Serral's faking a roach bush right now. He's not actually committing to it. He's just faking a roach bush. If these Lings can see drones popping out, then they'll know that this is not committed. He sees a lair, he sees an evo chamber, and immediately Solar, if he was paying attention to that, should know that this is not a committed push, and it's just a fake out. His lings are actually getting so many drones in the main. Serral, what the hell? The picture in picture, he didn't pull any units up into his main. He lost nine drones trying to fight those lings. Oh, big mistake. Serral's eyebrow raise. That was absolutely classic, angry, frustrated Serral. There was an exasperated... You saw him just a uh, big exhale of breath and uh, and a, his eyebrows just popped right up almost off the top of his head there. Serral did not look happy, realizing he mismanaged that quite badly. Solar now up in the workers and going for a spire. Says, I'm a little ahead. Let's squeeze that spire in. Solar is behind on the Evo chamber. This is kind of a laser style uh, ZV, ZVZ. Just super late Evo chamber. And uh, I mean, Serral's pretty late on his as well. You can tell both sides were kind of I think wary of the other being very aggressive. A couple more Banelings sneaking around the left side of the map. Melee upgrade, Solar's going to skip roaches entirely. I love it. Seeing the gases on the third and the lack of mineral saturation should be a tell. Serral should know that this is Muta play. However, he sees roaches popping out and that might trick him. No, no, no. Overseer sees it. He's all good. Serral does spot the Spire. We should see a few more Queens pop up if he's paying attention. Serral, Hydroden. Not my favorite in this scenario, guys. I do think queens are much better than hydras against mutalisks. Uh, a bit tanky, a bit more multi-purpose. Hydra's very expensive as well. He's going to go overlord speed as Serral. He's at up a bunch of workers, eight workers already. And securing the fourth base is the real key. If you can't get the fourth base up, you do end up in trouble. I think Serral's just saying, let's skip on spores and queens. Just get a bunch of hydras out because they can have, they're more of a multi-purpose unit. But he's got to start those hydras now. Otherwise, that fourth base may get sniped off. There we go. Hydras are not bad if it's just a pack of muters back into Roach play. But a good point from Bullia in Twitch chat, who says, well, if it's Mutaling Bane, it's the Banelings that counter the Hydras. That's where Hydras become bad. He thinks it's going to be back into Roaches after one round of muters, which it's not. And that's a very good point you made. Now, don't get me wrong. Roach Hydra can do good versus Ling Bane Muter. But it's, you need to sp spread your hydras, like pre-spread them. You need to try to wall them off with roaches. Any moment you get caught out of position, um, Banelings are going to ruin your day. Banelings, if they connect to the hydras, will absolutely smash them. And uh, I think Serral was building an infestation. He's going to try and take a gold base as Solar here. Solar's up in the workers now, building that mute account bigger and bigger. Overseer is going to get cleaned up by those hydras. He is starting to go after the overlords on the right side of the map. It's still Mass Roach Hydra for Serral. Yeah, I mean, a few Infestors would be amazing just to get him through the Baneling stage of the game. If you can get out a pack of, of Infestors, three, four, five, Fungal on those Banelings is going to stop them from advancing as hard. Muta's coming in, finding the drone line. Nicely done. Three drones go down. Definitely going to want to add a Spore Crawler on that base. A few Queens in the main. There's a Spore Crawler there as well, but one Queen left sticking out. One Muta goes down. Good trade for that. Gets a few of these roaches as well. The Roach Hydra out in the middle. Serral's going to go for a push. He says the best defense is a good offense. Let's bloody go, mate. And he's attacking across that map. But some of the units split off for the backstab. And right now, Baneling Speed's not done. Baneling Speed's not done. This is actually a very nice push for Serral. Serral might be able to just collapse in and kill that third. Yeah, he's going to get the third. He does let a few of the drones escape, which I was a bit surprised. I thought he'd go after those first, but that is still amazing damage. Overlord's going down as well. Baneling Speed is nowhere near ready. The Roach Hydra push is finding value, but he's lost five drones behind it. Looks like the Ling's finally getting cleaned up in his third base. He's killed 10 drones. He's lost six. Serral's still down five workers. The Banelings are here, but can they actually connect with the Hydras? The Hydra's trying to start a step. They're going to need to do a spready. Spready of the gods! Let's see how good is Serral's gymnastics. He's flexible, but there is a lot of Banelings. They do eventually connect. 
And that means there will be just enough muters, I believe, to overwhelm the Hydras. So the tail end of this fight is going to get hyper efficient there for Solar. Roaches do dive in on the base. He needs more economic damage. These roaches need to get more. As the lings pop out, that's going to cause problems. Oh, he finds the gold base drone line. Oh, but actually letting those drones escape back onto that third base. I think that's a mistake there for Serral. I think he's got to stay on top of these drones. He's clicked the hatchery. That's a mistake. Does take out the queen as well. The roach count getting dangerously low. I like that he's luring the muters away from the rest of his army while he's trying to kill the gold base. Serral's getting some sick damage done, but he can't be losing any more hydras. He's got to get that count back up. A few more drones and mining time going down. Roaches in the main will get cleaned up on the right side. Is the real important battle. The Hydra Count does get together. Solar wants to jump on top. If he can overwhelm the Hydra Count, he knows he can do this. If his Lings and, and Muters can overwhelm together, then he can take out Serral. This is a neck and neck ZVZ. This is a very, very difficult game. Mutaling Bane Mobility, though, tends to reign supreme on this map. And remember, it's still just Roach Hydra. Bane Link speed is done. Plus two melee will be done as well. These Bane Links are going to hit like a brick poop house, mate. They are going to come on in like a blood bloody outhouse that's been blocked up for weeks. We are going to see that thing get cracked open by a plumber and there's going to see a fountain of acid all over the place. That hatchery's in jeopardy. He's got to be careful. It's almost pure Hydra. So few roaches on the front line. Speed Bane's on creep. Spread, Serral. Spread. Spread. Oh, Solar finds the mark. The Hydras get absolutely blasted to kingdom come. There's not enough Hydras behind it. The spores aren't quite ready. The Muters just barely having enough numbers to overwhelm. But a good Ling backstab here for Serral. Serral's Roach is attacking across the map as well. He says, okay, you might have air superiority, but guess what? I've got these other things. Sporkrill is going to take out a couple Muters as well. Does get some good shots off, but the Muters will end up winning that fight. And Serral does not have those Infestors we talked about. Remember, just one or two Infestors, one or two Fungals would have been game-changing here. And finally, the plus two melee Lings do clean that up. Losing 12 drones is rough. The Roaches are on top as well. 17 drones. Solar's economy is getting knocked back to a dark place. On the other hand, so is Serral's. Serral has 60 drones with nowhere to mine from. They're both on three base first, three base, and these Lings and Muters will finally overwhelm these Roaches in behind the third. The Muter count's very scary. Serral pops up two Infestors in his production tab, but it's a bit too late. I don't think they're going to come out with Pathogen Glands. No Glands means no Fungal when they pop. And yeah, look at Cyril's face. Look at him. He's shaking his... He knows there's no play here. He's like, you're going to have at least as many muters as I have Hydras and Banelings on the ground. And I'll have like two Roaches and an Infested a Guard against those Banelings. He knows this is an impossible scenario. He's adding more Roaches to try to block the Banelings. He's going to try and use Spore Crawlers as well as they are amazing. I think in this scenario, it's like Roach Queen Spore Infesta is actually what you want. You don't really want Hydras. They're too expensive, too fragile. But he's stuck on him. He's got to make the most of a bad position. Solar's only on 42 drones. Solar is kind of all in. If Serral just spreads his units out. Oh, his Hydras are a little clumped again. Pretty good reactive spready, though. Pretty good reactive spready. The Infestor's sticking out, though. Oh, man, if he had one more Spore here, I think he could have maybe done it. I think one more Spore may have changed the outcome of that. Solar only on 42 workers, but Serral knew he was in a bad spot. And uh, Solar goes for the 42 drone all in. Serral... Looking very frustrated with how that game went. I think losing those nine drones in the main early really made him angry. Serral is not happy with that performance. All right, guys, going to the second map now. Sola has taken Serral's life. Serral is fighting to now take Sola's life. If he can do that, it goes into the ace match even. It'll be one best of two to decide it all. Which, actually, I think it becomes a best of one, right? If this is one, one... Because this is the... Yeah, yeah, then it would become a best of one. Whoever gets... I think it becomes... Because otherwise you could end up with a 1-1 one, one, and then you'd need to... It'd be a draw. So I'm pretty sure if if Sarah wins this, it'll be a best of one revival match where the players just play a single map and that'll be decide, deciding the whole thing. Single map to decide it all. Um, Sarah looks pretty tilted on camera, to be fair, but uh, he's looked tilted before. He lost 3-0 to Solar. I know he's super hungry for revenge, we were all shocked that Solar took him out at G8. That was a very surprising turn, but I think Solar played that last game very clever. Um, he really sprung the counter pressure back on Serral super hard with the, the Zerglings, and then he was very nifty with the way he positioned with them as well. Baneliness goes down for Serral. Nice and early. Solar's just a few seconds later. Dead even in terms of most scenarios. The only thing different is that Solar's got that third queen about halfway done. Serral's either already built her or not built her at all. I would imagine he hasn't started her. Yeah, he's, he's squeezing a couple more drones out, I believe. I'll have to 
take a look at that when we get a chance. 10, 10, 12 links on the way. Serral has really been enjoying this. This is like his standard ZVZ lately, is doing a 12 Zergling pressure on top of whatever links he has left over from the first four. Ooh. Okay, Ling's coming forwards for the pressure. Okay, here we go. Ling's coming forwards for the pressure. Ah, uh, Ling's trying to... Okay. Ling Scout gets in. Sola is ahead on the drones for now. Serral retakes the drone lead. Starts a Roachhorn. Single Ling in the main. Bit of trauma from those Lings in the main in the last game. Gets a, gets a drone. Serral looks... He looks angry. He looks visibly frustrated at that. There was a reaction on his face. 100% he's not kind of happy with these little things i think right now sarah's a little bit stiff kind of needs to snap out of that that uh that angry mode unless he's going to use it to fuel him i like focused angry sarah but uh I, i'm not liking the facial body language from him right now soul looking to come across with the counterling bane pressure sarah is ahead of few workers right now and lots of supply free he's making seven roaches on 43 drones whereas solar is droning up a bit harder than him and Serral, seven roaches and then back into drones. He's a big fan of doing this. Seven roaches and then back. Is he a bit too predictable with this? Because it's a fake roach push. But the thing is, he keeps letting uh, Solar scout it as well is a big problem. Uh, Solar does start a spine crawler. Two gases on the third going up as well. He's trying to go five gas, build his own roaches. I mean, so Serral's going to come across to these roaches. I don't think he has any plan to commit to the actual fight. He's building an Evo behind it. He's droning hard. I think he's scared Solar enough. This could get Serral in a pretty good spot. He's just got to try to... Oh, he pulls back so early. That's what I hate about Serral in this move. It, it, immediately, Solar just cancels his spine and goes... And he's like, okay, no worries. You're not actually committing. Starts his roach speed. Serral starts a spine and then cancels it, which was a bit odd. Um, his lings are scouting pretty well. S Solar's not continuing droning. Solar... Is taking it. That's a fake gas. That's a fake gas. He takes a gas in front of Serral to pretend he's macroing. Serral is droning hard. He's going to 68 drones right now while Solar is going through it for a 52 drone all in. That's going to be a 15 worker advantage for Serral. Uh oh. Solar tricked him, I believe, with that extra gas he just took in the main. This could be this could be problems. Serral does not have a spine. He cancelled it. He needs to do nothing but overlords and roaches from here. He's going up, like I said, 15 worker advantage. His roach speed's going to be much later. His plus one range is also a little later. So if Solar hits a crisp timing, he can attack with a roach speed and a plus one advantage. And Serral's building another drone and a spire. And he's building queens. He's building queens and a spire and a fourth archery. Serral scouting not on point. Sola has completely tricked him. He cancelled the gas in the main once he got rid of the Zerglings. Serral has completely misread this game. He thinks they're going into a macro game. He thinks it might be a Mutalisk war. He thinks it might be Mutas. He might have to go Corruptors. He's thinking three steps ahead. He doesn't realize Sola is still two steps behind him and is ready to stab him with a ton of roaches. The roach speed finishes. He's already cleared up the vision on this north. The roaches are already one third of the way across the map. They have not been spotted. Serral has no idea. He's about to experience a surprising fist of roaches right up his Zerg natural, and he's not going to be happy. A massive shake of his head. He's realizing that he has been tricked right now. Solar, he was initially building roaches to defend what he thought was a roach attack, and he said, why even bother stopping? Serral gets to tricked and Sola 2 0. Serral, he is 5 0 in his recent five maps against Serral. That is insane. Sola, he might be the king of ZVZ right now. All right, guys, who are they going to bring out? And it's going to be Reyna coming out for Pastelesque as their revival. He's got to kill Sola and he wants revenge versus Maru because you know Maru is probably going to be coming out. They could revive Sola to rematch him here. But yeah, Rainer cannot lose a map, guys. So Rainer needs to 2-0 Sola right now. And then he needs to kill the next guy as well. Now, I've heard, apparently I was saying the format wrong before. Apparently, it could, technically, if he 2-0 Sola, it's both of the revivals, they technically could go 1-1. And then have an ace match even after the revival match. I didn't even know that was possible. I thought it would automatically be a best of one sort of golden goal 
situation, whoever gets the first map wins. But if Reyna can 2-0 Solar here, then it will probably be Reyna versus Maru playing another two-map series. If that goes one-to-one, -one, then there'll be an ace match, apparently. I could be totally misunderstanding the way these rules have been explained to me. Right now, though, the only thing that matters is Reyna cannot lose a map. If he loses a map here, they're out because it's their last life. So even if he were to lose this map and win the next one, Onside would still have a life remaining, Basilisk wouldn't, and they're done. So if he loses a map, it is all over. Reyna needs to win two maps in a row. He's got his EVZ going here against Solar on Dragon Scales. Serral not feeling too confident uh, in rematching Solar after those last two games. I think he's a bit too tilted at 0-5 against the guy. Choosing to put Reyna in does make sense. Uh, of course, Reyna hopefully knows what he did wrong against Maru and can, can fix it and stuff. He's had some time to kind of prepare and go over what he needs to do differently. But that is for the future. For right now, it's just surviving against the man that is dominating ZVZ lately. Solar is looking fantastic. Here we go. Hatch gas pool coming in. Lots of drones being built. All right. Straight onto gas there for a solar, and same for Reyna. Both sides prioritizing getting Ling speed up as quickly as possible in this matchup. Now, I wonder if Reyna brings out a special build order. I wouldn't mind it. <clears throat> I would not mind it. I do think he's a little more comfortable in the mid game threatening the Roach pushes and receiving them from Solar than Serral. But man, what an epic series this has been to this point. And it's so cool. I mean, the, the, the fact that these two teams. I've just been head and shoulders ahead of teams like Team Liquid that have had great performances this season. Abydos in that third place. Dragon Kaizy Gaming looking very good throughout the season. Not to mention some of the other guys that made it to the playoffs, the underdog teams. Like, wasn't it Platinum Heroes, I believe, versus SSLT in the, 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 the first round of the playoffs, which was a very close match. I think SSLT barely came out on top. It's a very fun league, and we've seen a lot of upsets in this league as well. The, the two-game format does allow a lot of upsets, you know, where you've got lower-level players just need to take that one map and uh, essentially tie out with a much-favored player, giving their team a big advantage. It's it's really cool. Rainer cannot lose a map. He's going Banely Nest. He's playing safe. Solo? It's going to delay his a little bit. So the reason Rainer took his Banely Nest at 2 minutes 45 is if there's a Ling Flood, you need it that early to have Banelings to make sure 100% you keep your third alive. Solar's happy to be a bit greedier. He gets his about seven seconds later. And it, it basically just says, cool, I squeeze a drone in a little earlier than you. You know, I can basically be a little bit more efficient. There are a few Zerglings building for Solar. Rainer not building extra Lings just yet. There we go. Four Lings are now starting for him. If you guys haven't been following, the lives up top represented at the very top of the screen. One of those purple circles, that life left for Basilisk, two for Onside. Roach Warren's on the way for Solar. Solar is saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is how I eliminated Serral on this exact same map from Gamers 8. Let's do it again. He's going to try and do a little Ling Bane pressure, a very light one, and then just shove Roaches off 28 workers across the map. It's a big single gas all in. He's got to keep Rainer back. Rainer's droning hard behind this. Rainer needs to get that info. But good setup so far for Solar. Does lose two Banelings. But you got to get the info. The info, because Rainer doesn't have a Roach Warren. Oh, man. It's all about spotting these Roaches. It's all about spotting these Roaches. All that Roach Warren. But it's so early. This push is so committed. I used to think of this as such a gamble. But it's so well disguised. That's what makes it powerful. He's already into Massling behind. It's going to be a big old Roach Bane. Eight Roaches starting to cascade out of the natural. They are gathering up. And that is going to be a tsunami of Zerg. He does see it. Okay, Rainer sees it. His Roach Warren has started. He needs to wall off his natural and pull back. Spinecrawler's building in the natural. He doesn't have a, a wall off though. No Evo Roach Warren wall. I actually think that makes it way easier to defend this. He's going to try and make Banelings. You need to keep some Banelings in reserve. The big mistake Serral made up against this push is he didn't keep Banelings in reserve. And then the Lings were able to surround his units as they popped out. So you've got to keep some Banelings in the back behind it all. Queens come forward, take out one of Solar's Banelings. Other than that though, he is pulling back. But look, these spines aren't quite ready. That's what's so scary about this push on this map. He doesn't have time to get the spines up. First one dies without a cancel. Second one is about to die as well. Baneling gets a decent hit. But but, oh, the spine crawler goes down. Banelings all detonate. He didn't keep any Banelings in reserve. Oh, no, that's a big mistake. The next Ling Flood that comes in is going to be a problem. It looks like a close fight. He has to pull drones. Rainer has to pull drones right now. He's got to pull drones. The Baneling finishes morphing in the mineral line. Ow, 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 ow. 
But you notice, look guys, there's no Banelings. He's bringing a Spine up. The Lings are about to flood in. This is a problem for Raynor. He needs to keep his damage output alive. He needs to pull drones in to help fight this. This is a big mistake for Raynor to not pull drones. He still looks like he might be able to hold though. He's got a decent number of units, but units popping out at the third are getting surrounded. And that's what I was talking about. It's when those Lings come in for the surround. That is the deadly move. He's got more Banelings morphing, but they're not ready yet. The Ling surround is so powerful. It's always that second wave that hits like a brick hammer. Oh man, Soul of the Master of the Brick to the Face tactic. If he can take out Rainer here, he will seal the deal for Onside. Everyone said Maru's the big the big boy. He's the reason Onside's doing well. Soul is okay. He takes some maps, but come on. Look at what Soul is doing for Onside now. Look at this man picking up a brick and smashing it into Rainer's third base. Takes it out. Rainer's still up in workers though. But he's contained on two bases. His roach count is also low. He's been forced into a lot of Banelings. Solo says, I have three hatcheries. I can drone behind this, and you cannot get a third base right now. Banelings coming up the ramp as well as the roaches and the ravagers trying to do what they can. Good micro backwards. Does lose a roach or two. Rainer wants one more roach. He does get it, but he's going to lose his queens for it. Oh! Big Baneling. Boom, boom. Solo gets a bit of a stiffy. Does get a little bit overexcited there. Rainer should be able to retake that third now. He's not that far behind on workers. Rainer can come back from this. He's making a lair, he's making drones, and he's sending a drone out to that third base. Good hold by Rainer. I do think though, guys, if he kept either a Baneling in reserve up his ramp, or if he pulled drones earlier into that fight, he could have kept his initial roach count high. And if you keep the initial roach count up, sacrifice 10 drones, you stabilize earlier, you never lose the third, and you can go back to droning. Plus one rangers on the way. Solar's up six workers and droning hard right now. Third base rebuilding for Rainer. He's definitely going to be behind in the mid game, but will it be game losing behind or will it just be, you know, you're a cycle of drones behind. It's not the end of the world. So far, upgrade lead and drone lead continues to grow. Ten drones. Rainer's building roaches right now. Rainer is, that, I don't know what, why is he building roaches? I think he saw Solar's army and got intimidated. He's building a lot of roaches. Okay, Rainer might just be planning an all-in, but I don't know if that's the play from here. 48 drone all-in. It's going to be nasty. Okay, I like this move. Sneaky Banelings. Oh, six drones. Nicely done. Very good catch. And you know what? Solar is Solar's probably going to replace those drones. He's building a Spire, droning very hard. If Solar takes a fourth base here as well, it's a lot of money. And but wait, Rainer's going back to droning. What's he doing? Oh no, I really feel like Rainer cannot afford to be just unnecessarily making roaches right now, but he's going roaches, drones, roaches, drones. Oh, I think he thought Solar was going to follow up with another attack. Solar is famous for following up one all-in with a round of drones and then wave two of the same sort of attack. It wouldn't be untoward. It would not be unexpected for Solar to go and smash in with another 20 roaches and 10 banelings a few minutes later. But that is not the case. And so Rainer is caught mixing his economy halfway between drones, halfway between roaches, which means he doesn't have a roach advantage big enough to kill, and he doesn't have an economy to match Solar's either. He's going to move through the middle of the map, but this is a half-cocked push right now. Rainer's a pretty... He's grown up a lot in the last few years, guys. He's got a set of shoulders on him now. He's not the little boy we once knew. Don't normally think of him as a half-cocked sort of guy. I think of him as a very confident guy who goes all in or doesn't at all. But... He runs in, loses a roach, grabs a ravager, has to get out of there. I don't think he's got the numbers to take this fight. He did not commit enough to this. Ah, oh, great positioning for Solar. Solar's on the defense right now. Second Evo's on the way for Rainer. Rainer is down only three drones. So he does have a bit of a nice aggressive positioning. He did cancel the fourth. If he can cancel it again, he's got his own fourth on the way, but I don't think he's got the firepower on those roaches. Ah, he actually gets a cancel. Don't think he necessarily needed to. Does get the drone so the rebuild doesn't happen. Okay, Rain is doing some fancy maneuvers. He's done a great job of getting himself back in the Roach War. Problem, those units don't care about who's winning the Roach War. Flappy birds of death emerging from their cocoons. And Rainer starts a Hydroden. Looks like he realizes what's happening, but I think that Hydroden's way too late. The Muters are already on their way across the map. Rainer is up against the wall, and he cannot afford to take any more punches in this game. But he, his team cannot afford for him to fall. He needs to win this game and the next one to keep his team alive. This is such a hard position to be in. His roaches desperately shove across the map, say, okay, we don't have anti-air at home. Let's try to distract the Mutalisks. Solar says, cool, free kills. I'll take it. Gets a, gets a roach or two. Starts working on this spore crawler out front. Queen's coming forward. 
Drone does cancel, rebuilds the spore very quickly. Great micro by Rainer. Roach is attacking the fourth base as well. He says, get over here then. No worries. Soul is going to back off for those roaches. It is Roach Muta, not Muta Link Bane this time around for Solar. But he's way up in supply. He's up five workers. He is a little behind in upgrades, but his Mutas are causing a lot of a mess running all around the map. And he's up 40 army supply of mostly Roach Ravager. Yes, he's got a handful of Mutas that are inflating that, but still being up even 10, 12 Roaches right now, if he can hit when they're both just at plus one attack, Rainer's upgrades have not kicked off. His fourth base is in jeopardy. Here comes the brick! Solar, never want to overcomplicate it. He will shove in when he thinks he has that advantage, and he definitely has that advantage right now. Solar sometimes says, you know what? People out there want to paint paintings. I want to just get my toolkit and just bloody hit you on the head with a hammer. And sometimes that's the best way to play StarCraft. He keeps it simple. He does it perfectly. He tricks his opponents and he, and he dances. He just danced on the camera. Solar showboating there. He knows he's got, got it in the bag. He's clapping for himself. And Basilisk and Rainer absolutely got it there. But dude, Solar showing some absolutely God tiers. And that's what they needed. Basilisk is heavily weighted towards their two players that are two of the best Zergs in the world. And whoever was going to beat them needed to have an immaculate performance. They needed fantastic ZVZ to take him out. We've got to go back and look at that dance very quickly here at the end, guys. That there, someone... I know it's not the highest quality. Can we get some gifts of that, please? <laughs> it's so adorable. <laughs> GG, well played. And congrats to Onside for a well-deserved victory. Fantastic play from Solar. Really, really well done. And thanks for watching such an epic series with me. Uh, congrats to Onside for becoming the WTL Champions.